104.9 XFM, uh, you alright? This is Carl, uh, producer of, uh, Ricky Gervais and Steve Merchant. They're not about today. Ricky's on holiday. Uh, Steve couldn't be bothered. So, um, I'm left here with all the dats. Uh, that's a digital audio tape, uh, of all the, uh, of all the shows they've done since they've been here over the last, I don't know, year and a half or something. So, uh, we'll play you uh, some of the best bits. Alright, so, uh, here's the first bit. I, I just wish we could maybe tape the bits we're not on air, just because that's when Carl comes into his own. Yeah. He just said to me, I was, I don't know what I was doing, I was sort of like pottering around, dancing around, doing something annoying probably, and he just looked at me, I don't know, he was looking at me, and I looked back and he went, have you ever used a Y front properly? Genius. It's a great question because the answer is definitely no. Definitely Has no. It, does anyone use their Y front properly? And by that, I mean get your winky out of the little sort of um, slot provided, as yeah. opposed to like put it to one side or pull them down or yeah. whatever. Has anyone used a Y front properly? I don't think I've ever done it. I don't think I've ever done it. I've never seen anyone in a toilet doing it, Rick. You should be looking. <laughs> I wish I hadn't said that. <laughs> I caught I got you. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> actually how you prove people are gay. <laughs> yeah. You get them into this conversation. Yeah. Yeah, it is a trap. Uh, yeah, it's a trap. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was a trap. Yeah. I'm not gay, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't tell me I was gay, I double bluffed you. Because <laughs> I knew the old gay trick. <laughs> I thought it was the old gay lord say no thing. That is another method. Oh, yeah, there's, a, there's innumerable methods of doing it. That's how Oscar Wilde was caught. Yeah. Yeah. What happened there? Well, the judge went to him. Uh, did you see that film last night? Gay Lord Say No, and he went no, and they went take him away. Yeah. <laughs> take him down to the cells. Yeah, take him to Reading. It is true. Um, is well, it originated in America. Yeah. So many of these things do. It's yeah. a brilliant point, Carl. I'd like to hear from anyone, anyone listening who's- and I mean, uh, well, they'll just lie when they ask me. Yeah. I don't even use, uh, sort of flies. No? Usually. I sort of, just, sort of, sort of pull my t my friend, uh, my sort of tracksuit. So that's why I wear sort of like elasticated weights right until they die. Just sort Speed. of like- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, you gotta get in there with the minimum of effort. Yeah, we and out. Sure, sure. Often I won't shake. No, oh, no. To my detriment, because it <laughs> often leaks out a little bit later, oh. doesn't it? Ever been out on a date with a girl where it's just trickled down your leg <laughs> and you wish I hadn't, and you're thinking, yeah. what if she gets my trousers off later? She'd probably smell or see it. <laughs> what? <laughs> like what? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I said there. <laughs> right. Uh, Rick, I had for Christmas something which I think might excite you and interest yeah. you, because I know you're obsessed and interested by facts. Yeah. Don't fiddle with the microphone. Well, I was just looking at what it was underneath it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is a book, uh, it's just facts and trivia. It's edited by Sir Isaac Asimov, who oh, I think's yeah. dead. So I don't know how, when my parents bought this book. I assume it's from a second-hand shop or something. Right. It's quite long, but I got it for Christmas. I keep meaning to bring it in, because there are, generally the facts are quite sensible in here. And I like to think if Isaac's been involved, they're probably substantiated. It's not like, kind of, just this nonsense on the web. Or, I think or that this is probably- Or pretty... up in Greg's The Bakers that <laughs> Carl gets <laughs> most of his facts from. Uh, the ancient Egyptians trained baboons to wait on tables. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, fascinated. Brilliant. That's fantastic. But, uh, what's, what, what my point about that is, why did they stop? Yeah. It's genius, a genius idea. Did, Would you not want to go to a restaurant where they have baboon serving? No, I'll tell you what happened. You. It might have been like the Planet of the Apes and they sort of rebelled. <laughs> one of them could talk, one of them could take his order, and one day when they went, um, uh, do you want fries with that? And the bloke got really annoyed and said, answer him back, and then there was a, some sort of rebellion. Right, 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 yeah. right. The Planet of the Apes isn't true, is it? It's not, it's, no, it's not, it's, it's not a documentary. Right, okay. I wonder, cause what I like the idea of having baboons is the fact that I reckon they're, like I have tr tr difficulty, and I'm sure you do, Carl, like working out that sort of 10%, <laughs> you know, on a bill. Yeah. I reckon baboons would find that particularly hard. I reckon you could get away with under tipping them all the time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just not leaving enough and just legging it. <laughs> exactly. They go away and you go, sucker. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I'd love to see yeah. some baboon <laughs> restaurants. If there's yeah. any restaurateurs out there, so tell us or someone. If you do go, go to a restaurant and you wait on those, please don't order the banana daiquiri because it comes half eaten. <laughs> they can't help their little selves. <laughs> they really can't. They're okay with like, you know, beef and steak and chips and all that, but you know, there's a little bag of, I go, do you want <laughs> Can you imagine that, the baboons serving at waiting tables? It's genius. Just stop to think about that. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah. It's absolutely dynamite. Yeah. That's See, zoos fact. would be a lot more popular if there was like the canteen and you could go <laughs> If they were serving tickets to two? Uh, yeah, exactly. one child row. Okay, go through there. 
Okay. Well, I think they should do other things, like in, you know, in the Flintstones, they used to mix cement in that bird's kind of- Pelican, thing. yeah, yeah. Just, we should start doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> because that's, that also happened in ancient times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, according to the Flintstones. Be yeah, before they had proper cement mixers, that's what <laughs> that was, they did. That was how they it, did it. Definitely, just, yeah. Just, uh, animal facts. I remembered one in the week. Um, Go on. There was, do you know them two gay American men who have, have tigers? Okay, the two gay ones, oh, yeah, go two on. Two possibly gay ones. Yeah, let, let's not worry about libel law um, anymore, then all. Yeah, if you shave on. a tiger's head. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Right, okay. You've got to treat that sentence with a lot more reverence than you did. <laughs> Think what you're saying. If you shave a tiger's head. Not just his head, its whole body. If oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry, yeah. So I thought, you, I thought you were getting weird. Go on, then. Go yeah, on. If you shave a tiger, yeah, go on. It's still stripy underneath. The yeah. skin, the skin's. Is stripy. it like rock? <laughs> it goes all, it the, like way all the way through. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's amazing. Where did you hear that one? That's, I remembered that. Like, I was, was that a drunk just shouting it in the street? <laughs> 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 I shaved a tiger and it's still striving. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know a polar bear? Come on. Polar bear's, um, skin is actually, um, black and its fur is transparent, not white. And it gives the illusion, so it, uh, it gets all the radiation possible from the sun, but it's still camouflaged. I didn't understand that, Rick. Sorry, you lost me. If a, its skin's black, a polar bear's skin is black, and its fur is translucent, and its fur is translucent. So why is it white when we? Well, it's just because the, the light hits it, and the sun reflects on. Yeah, it. and it makes it look white. Yeah, so if you look at each individual hair, it's actually translucent. So at night, hair. it would be black. <laughs> well, everything is. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, not bright stuff, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> you embarrass yourself. Play a record. <laughs> XFM 104.9. Lovely, that one. Now, again, I broke the rules in the week. I met up with Carl. Oh, I had lunch with him. And, uh, we were chatting and having a, having a cup of tea. And it got onto one of Carl's favourite programmes was the Tales of the Unexpected. Oh, of course. And all I can think is that he's probably the only person in Britain where they were unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to him, when that, that twist came in, he'd go, gee, I can't. Yeah. Oh God! Can't believe so it was the tree that did it. <laughs> I mean, he was probably the only. And, I, and we were telling all these stories of horror, and he liked horror stories. And I, and I told him this story, and, uh, and I don't know if this had come across the radio, but I told him this story. Um, it was a, it was a short. It was a horror short. This was a, a film you saw, was it? Yeah, yeah. And um, what it was, it started off just had been a car crash. You see, it's a horrendous wreck, and you saw it from the point of view of the person in the car, and he was calling for his mate, and he was going, Dave. And he sort of, he sort of looked over and saw a body without a head that had been thrown at He goes, oh no, Dave, Dave. And then into the field of view came Dave, his mate, and looked at him with a look of horror. And then it sort of went black and you realised that he was just a head and it had been his body. Oh, wow. Right? Yeah. And I said, then, then it came up at the end, um, uh, at the, uh, uh, executions and the French Revolution, um, people experienced consciousness for, you know, and he went, he went, oh. No, he said, you wouldn't, it wouldn't be for that long. And then he went, if it was a chicken, it would work. <laughs> Imagine remaking that film, but it's two chickens in horrendous car crash. <laughs> it Their would, own fault for driving. <laughs> <laughs> it would work. No. No, he wasn't having that. Yeah. No, it was too long. I think he said, how long was this film? Went about five minutes. He went, no. <laughs> it would work if it was a chicken. I like the way that Carly was something like, when you t relate an incident like that, he's appalled and offended and annoyed by the people that made it, even though he's yeah. never seen it. Oh, he's, he's, get, he's annoyed, yeah. Do you have a favourite uh, Tales of the Unexpected, one that you remember particularly that shook you up? Yeah, we were talking about the one on, um, where, uh, there's some woman in prison. Have you seen that one? No, I can't remember them all. Right? This woman's in prison. Yeah. And, uh, she gets a bit friendly with the guy who takes the dead bodies out. Right. And, uh, he said, I can get you out of it. So what you've got to do, right? You've got to, uh, I don't know, at midnight. When you, well, when you hear the bell toll, yeah, that when, means there's, a, there's been a, yeah, a dead body. Yeah, yeah, there's been a dead body. So what you've got to do is go into like the uh, place where all the dead bodies are, get on the, get in the first coffin on the right, and then I'll come along and carry you out, and you can run away and escape. Yeah. Right. So she goes, yeah, all right then. So she hears the bell go. Oh, no, I'll, I'll, I'll bury you, right. And then I'll come, I'll come back later and dig you up. Right. Yeah, but that's that, the that point. It doesn't matter. It does matter. Trust me, Carl, it right, really matters. Okay. Listen, 
I don't uh, know if I'm gonna ruin this for people at home. Yeah. Can I just skip to the end? I would imagine that she gets buried and he doesn't come back and she has to get no, buried alone. Be better than yeah. that. So she gets in the coffin and uh, she's lying there for ages. She's and buried. She can feel a bit of movement going on, so she's obviously, you know, being carried somewhere, so she's thinking, this is it, I'm getting out. And, uh, I mean, she's lying there for ages and thinking, why isn't someone coming and lifting the lid off this? Do you know what I mean? Letting me get out. So she's really bored. She gets a lighter out, right? Lights it to have a look at who she's lying on. It's only the fella who said she'd he'd help escape. Oh. How bad is that? That is. <laughs> How bad is that? <laughs> <laughs> so it is quite important that she's buried alive, then, isn't it? In retrospect, you realise that the jeopardy is that she is buried alive yeah. and can't get out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes it so much worse, doesn't it, than just like lying in the morgue and going, "Actually, I'm getting out of here." Yeah, this isn't going to work. Look at Carl's face. Having yeah. told that, he's so pleased. His face is lit up. He's beaming like yeah. a child. Is Have that, you seen any? Is that your favourite horror thing ever? What was that one you told me about with the uh, with the porn? That was a good one. Oh, this was fantastic, right? <laughs> right. There was this, there was this, uh, Sorry, can I just check now? We're just remembering classic episodes of the Tales of No, this is, now, this we? is, this is important. Well, I saw one, <laughs> right? I saw one, um, on Tales and Inspect, right? And it was, um, uh, this, these two gents, um, uh, what they used to do, they look, look down the obituaries and they'd blackmail um, the, the wife or the son of a, a dead eminent person, like it might be a priest or a doctor or something, and they'd go and they'd say, he bought some, um, erotic, uh, um, stuff from us, um, before he died, and he owes, a uh, uh, hundred guineas and all this sort of stuff, and, uh, and they'd pay up because it'd be so embarrassing, they just didn't want to say, so just pay him, yeah. you know? And this one bloke said, um, who are these people? I'll meet with them. And he goes around there, and he goes around, and, uh, they go, your father, he goes, my father could not have bought any erotic material from you. And they did it, he goes, he couldn't have, he's blind. <laughs> right, and that was the twist. And Carl went, we'll start with magazines, not videos then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now think about it, Steve. Is that so stupid? Well, presumably it was set in olden times because yeah. people, um, oh, professional right. pornographers don't tend to call it, you know, <laughs> erotic material. <laughs> yeah. They tend to call it, you know, juicy jugs or whatever. <laughs> but more than that, I don't understand how a video is going to be any use to a blind person either. I know that you can hear the sound, yeah. Carl. <laughs> yeah. Look at him nodding like yeah. he's walking out. Yeah, what sound will you hear? Do 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 Your meter mm. needs looking at? Yes. Cut. What's then? What's that? Then it's just noises, isn't Occasional it? groans. Yeah. Right. You okay. could listen through the wall at your neighbours. <laughs> he does. <laughs> I mean, that's why I save a lot of money. <laughs> But I thought you were going to point out, Carl, that they could have had a braille porno. Now, have yeah. you thought of that? Look, feel, feel the lumps on that. <laughs> exactly. Think about it, Carl. Think about it. You're excited now. Yeah. yeah. Your girlfriend's away, Carl. Yeah, the cheese grate is only under the cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's a good looking lady. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever been hated? You One hundred four point nine XFM. Hello, uh, I'm Carl. Ricky and uh, Ricky Gervais and Steve aren't here, so we're uh, we're playing through some of the best bits. I say the best bits. Uh, it's the bits I came across first. I mean, I'm not I'm not wasting my time. I'm I'm a busy man. You know what I mean? So um, here's here's another bit. What do you make of the first genetically modified baby? Oh. Are you worried about you, this? Do you know what, what did they do? What? Uh, Let me see what it says here. It well, says, isn't it uh, just choosing, uh, choosing the, you know, eye colour? Well, this or, is the, or, this is the, this is the concern, isn't it? That in the future you'll be able to decide, uh, whether it's a boy or a girl, what, how intelligent it is, what it looks like, is it handsome, is it ugly? Obviously no one will choose an ugly baby, and so on and so on and so on. And so, it means that, you know, wh where will it lead? Where will it end, Carl? Are you concerned? I've thought about this a lot. What will us three look like in the future? I mean, if listen. they're being, you know, genetically modified beautiful people, what will be, we be like? How will we be considered in That's society. True, yeah. But we've talked about this before, haven't we? About, uh, the cloning thing. Yeah. That's a bit weird. Yeah. But, um, I don't think it matters because at the end of the day, right, you might look like some other kid, but it's the way you've brought, that you brought up that will change your features and the way you are, you know, your personality. If you lie, you get a long nose, don't you? Well, no, well, listen, right, because I remember when, when we, you know, I was growing up on this estate. This is gonna be good. Go on. No, no, it's not. It's just a, an example of how this doesn't work. Go on. Know, so we don't need to worry, sort of thing. Sure. Right? Okay. So I'm growing up on this estate, and there was a there was this woman about four houses down, right? It's a bit rough. <laughs> all right. Didn't fancy her. Oh God, no. 
right? But she had a <laughs> baby. Well, tell me about her first. I'm interested in this woman. Why was she? It, it was a very. So, like, being a man in a dress. I mean, I didn't grow up in a posh house or anything. I'm sure. Not, I'm not saying that if you live in a bit of a rough house, mm. you're a bad person. What but, did she look like? But anyone can Tattoos? clean up. Look like make, Tony Green with a fag on. They didn't clean up much, right? Oh. Which. Even if you've not got a lot of money, you can still try well, and make it place look nice. Yeah. Right? But she didn't, and a kid used to take a horse into the house. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> whoa, 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 oh, whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 Neddy, whoa, 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 Neddy. What do you mean a kid used to take a horse into the house? Where did they get it, a right? horse? Must have nicked it from somewhere. <laughs> Must have gone. Is using water? <laughs> no. What, is that from outside the saloon round the corner? <laughs> yeah, was it just tied up with a bit of <laughs> Right? And, um, oh, that's great. I did Big out. Jake <laughs> come <laughs> looking for it. I, I, I'd been out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, sorry, let me get this up. This was before the lynching stopped or after. <laughs> Where did he get a horse from? What do you mean he must have nicked it? His mum said, where'd you get that from? I bought it, alright then. But we'll keep it out of the kitchen. I don't want you going cattling, rustling. <laughs> <laughs> Where did he get a horse from, Carl? Just... And how long did he have it for? Until... Was he leading it or riding it? <laughs> Mum, open the door, I can't stop! I can't stop it! <laughs> open the patio door as well! We... Looks like we got us a runaway! <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know, but the oh. thing is, they couldn't afford to buy one because they're not cheap. So I'm just guessing. Maybe that's wrong of me. But I, I think- He had a horse? Yeah, right, so- That's I, why the family didn't have any money, they'd spend it on the horse! No, exactly. I don't think, that's what I'm saying, I don't think they would have bought it. So anyway- Yeah, it's always so, to Carl, in case they're listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and They could not, be in the room next door. It's not buying it, it's keeping it as well. Oh, no, so I, So I was like in the car with my dad, coming yeah. into the avenue, and you used to have to drive down it to turn round. And, yeah. Uh, and you know, sort of go back to to our house. You had the traditional method of transport, <laughs> yeah. And uh, the horse was in the lounge, <laughs> reading a paper, just just like walking around. <laughs> oh God! This is what? And when I when I was doing, I, I tried to earn myself some money once by flogging little flowers in in plastic cups. What? This right. is and genius! <laughs> it just keeps coming. What do you mean you tried to flog little flowers? What do you mean? <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. Let's, let's play a record, let's play a record and come back to this, because it's always going to just unravel and unravel. It's going to go for hours. Let's play a track, Carl. It's deeper and deeper, it's yeah, like an on, onion, Carl. isn't it? We've created a whole world here where there's a man living with a horse. Just walking around the lounge. I mean, I, I come from the West Country, I've never just, heard anything like that. I just think of a big sort of like orange carpet and it's got a, a rediffusion telly and this horse yeah. going, I'm fed up in here. Exactly. This is really... I am not taking the rubbish out again. Yeah. Right, play a record. Let's have uh, Velvet Underground. We've got that lined up. Oh, yeah, God. the classic from the first album. Uh, I'm waiting for the man. Let's come back to the horse in a second. Little flowers in pots. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh. From that classic first album, Velvet Underground and Nico, which apparently peaked at a disappointing 171 in the US charts. Think of that. And that's obviously Lou Reed, the Velvet Underground, and uh, Waiting for the Man. Yeah, great track. So, we were talking, uh, we were doing White Van Man. And uh, we got onto uh, um, we got onto to genetically, genetically modified babies. But and then somehow Carl we... started telling a story about someone with a horse. And then he got onto he was trying to make money selling flowers. Just do the flowers. Briefly. Well, hang on, I just want to recap slightly. So there was a family, and who had the horse in the family? It was because you lived on a, an estate in Manchester. The, so the, the yeah. mother, the mother was a right pig, apparently. Well, I don't know if that's so you relevant. You don't need to go that far. But, but, you, but well, what I'm trying to do is like make a picture for you, so you understand. What, what, did, what, she what, look a like? what did she look like? Um, bit of a. And no disrespect to her. <laughs> Bit like Pauline Quirk. <laughs> Quirky, yeah. <laughs> right? Okay. I knew you were gonna say that. Mm. I knew it was gonna be Pauline. Did she have any tats? Did she have any tats? I've never got that close to her. Okay, alright. So, and so who had the horse? Was this her son or her no, husband? No, her, her daughter. Her daughter had stolen a horse. Yeah, from I don't know where. There was a, I think it was some stables down the road or something. And they they kept the horse in the house with. Them. They kept it in the house. Did but they, they didn't get have it for long? No. So and you said you were in the house one day and you saw the no, horse. No, in what there. happened was I was. Um, they did this thing at school about raising money for charity, right? For some local charity, and they said you can do anything to to raise money, and they came out with all these ideas, and I thought that's good. What was the charity? Well, forget. Well, I don't know. I thought forget the charity. Yeah, that's I'm just a good way making over so, <laughs> You're a charity. So, um, <laughs> so I asked me ma'am for some, uh, cause she used to have a lot of flowers around the house. Sure. I said, can I just take some snippings of them? And, uh, I'll go and buy some plastic cups. And, uh, got some soil out of the garden, planted the, the, the bits of plants in them. Yeah. Got a tray. Yeah. Had about 25 plants on it, selling yeah. them for 25 pence each. Excellent. Did you sell any? Yeah, so loads. So they, did you just cut, you didn't just cut them and stick them in yeah, the soil? Yeah, they want to survive. 
Ah. Oh. But I think people sort of thought, well, good on him for trying. But anyway, so I went round to theirs, because I thought their house could do with a bit of colour and stuff. Yeah. So it's a bit rough. So as I went- The horse went, thank God for that <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> they, was, they, they was feeding me kitty cat. <laughs> so I got up to the door, and they opened the door, and it was one of them houses where no carpet. <laughs> yeah. A horse in the living room. <laughs> you know. We've all been there. And, yeah. and the horse was walking around the living room. Oh. I looked quite happy and everything, because- I always say that about animals. That beauty right? was on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, think about it, right? If you were a horse, where would you rather be? In a little wooden hut with a load of hay, or in like a house with a central you know, heating, three-piece suite, sure. and a telly and that? Telly and that. No, but I was saying this the other day. Right? <laughs> and an Atari, right? <laughs> I was walking through London. Covid or sixty four, yeah. rubbish. Exactly. W walking through London with Suzanne, right? Yeah. And you know, like homeless people, always have dogs. And yeah. she said, "Oh, I hope, I hope she looks after." Her. I said, "They've got that dog is happier than most dogs, right? Because people always walk past and give it a pat on the head. Yeah. It's with its owner all the time. Yeah. yeah. It's out in the open. It's not locked up in a house. Yeah. It doesn't you know eat. I mean? But other than that, <laughs> no, it does eat. Though they're always all right. So that's what I was saying. I think this horse. Was was doing all right for yeah. itself. Do you know? <laughs> well, not many horses have got their own house. Is that the first start? Yeah. But well, anyway, that's that's well, that's by the by. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, this family, it was a bit. What we were talking about, it was about genetically modified kids yeah. and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Right now, what I'm saying is, you could say, you know, right, Steve, you could have a baby, mm -hmm. right? And Ricky could see it and say, God, I want one that looks like that. Yeah. <laughs> right. It could happen, Rick. <laughs> So come on, work with him. So you take it to the doctors, <laughs> and I don't know what they do. They, they inject it with something or whatever. Yep, that's how yeah. it's done. Yeah, and uh, get a little baby, and there it is. It looks the same. Now the thing is, you separate. You both go off and do your own things. Yep. Right yeah. now, you look at Steve, Stephen. This is you look after your baby. Yeah. You treat it well. You give it good food and I'm that. A good dad. All the vitamins and stuff. Yeah. And Ricky just gives it cheese. <laughs> right. So then it changes its looks. It goes a bit fat. You know, it gets tired easily, and that sort of thing. <laughs> now, when this family- Why am I just feeding a baby cheese? Right? This, this, um, this, this, this family who had a horse in the, in, you know, in, the, in their house. Yeah. They had a, a little baby. And my mum went round and said, you're not gonna believe this, but it's a beautiful looking baby. Right? Yeah. And I was like, well, you know. And, uh, the weird thing is, it was a good looking kid, but as time went on, they didn't really look after it. And I'm not saying like abusing it, but he used to run around, he used to play out till like 10 at night. Yeah. Uh, he used to chase cars. <laughs> right. It was a bit. <laughs> Did it have hooves? <laughs> yeah, no. No. <laughs> Chase cars! Right? What sort of chases cars? <laughs> oh, God! No. Was it called Rover? The weird Did it catch sticks? Liam, it was called, right? Right. Now, the weird thing is, it was a good looking kid, but as time went on, and all that, like, not eating properly and its hair was all patchy. <laughs> it's not Liam Gallagher, is it? <laughs> And chasing cars on that, and it became an ugly kid. <laughs> it's definitely Liam Gallagher. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's what I'm saying, right? You can uh, clone, you can clone all you like, but at the end of the day, it's yeah. how you brought up. Brilliant. Wow! Wow! <laughs> life. Wow! That was a hell of a point. Oh God! <laughs> but am I right? Oh, you're always right, Carl. <laughs> This is Carl, the uh, producer of Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant on XFM 104.9. We're playing out some of the best bits, hope you're enjoying it. Here's another one. And now it's Carl's bit, it's Carl's, it's the re-education of Carl, he's like Liza Doolittle. And now he's, uh, he's coming to, or Lawnmower Man if you've seen that film. More like Lawnmower Man if you've seen the film, you know what I mean. Um, uh, and uh, his homework was to t just study quotes, really, on, on happiness and stuff and general well-being. He's not a big happiness uh, quote fan, are you, Carl? Not really. So what have you done? You've, you've come up with something, haven't you? Right, yeah, I told you, right? Because a lot of these are just things you say every day. They're nothing special. Um, <laughs> so what I'm doing... Well, you say them every day. <laughs> well, yeah. the sort of things you come out with and you don't even think about it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. They're, yeah. In, they're on the TV all the time. People on the radio are saying these sort of little quotes. Sure. And, um... What I've done is, remember that programme on Channel 4, Faking It? Yeah. Where they got some, like, posh kid to be on a door and all that. What I've done, <laughs> I've, um... <laughs> Imagine if that was the pitch <laughs> for the show. <laughs> Dear Channel 4. <laughs> just gonna get yeah, a posh kid on a door or something? Yeah, yeah, come, come in, really come in. Yeah. TV yeah. producer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, go on. So, what I've done, <laughs> this little book of quotes, uh, happiness quotes, I've, um, I've picked two that are real. Okay. And I've made one up. 
Right. <laughs> and we've got a guess. And you've got a guess. Okay, what then. Go on. Well, I'll tell you what, Rick. Why don't we, when we've heard them, we won't confer. No. You'll write down yours, yeah. A, B, or C, and I'll yeah. write down mine, and we'll sure. see how Okay, works. Carl, off you go. Right, and just because I'm, I'm looking at this book, it doesn't mean I'm actually reading. No, I know. Don't no, worry, no. We're, we're clever. No, no, we know. We, know, we can't it. see. Uh, it's like yeah. call my bluff. Yeah, okay. go on then. Nothing is worth more than this day. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The way I see it. <laughs> 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 Oh, oh God, my head's gonna burst. No, hang on. My head's gonna burst. No, hang, hang no, on. this might not be Carl's. Oh, it might not be. How do you know I haven't tweaked them a little bit? Yeah, good okay, point. Good enough. point, no, good point. The way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you gotta put with the rain. Yeah, okay. okay. Alright. Alright, yeah. Okay, no. Come on. Cat food. <laughs> Cat food, come on. He stinks a bit. <laughs> but if you don't put up with the smell, the little kitten will die. <laughs> Steve! Steve! I don't know what to say! <laughs> I don't know what to say! Why is he faking it? Imagine their faces when he says that and they're going, oh my god. Oh. Carl, play a song, mate. <laughs> oh, we'll have to confer on this one. <laughs> <laughs> go on in. Right. Uh, first one. Nothing is worth more than this day. Excellent. Next one. What does that mean? Well, cherish, cherish yeah. now, cherish your yeah. time. Okay. Because you, you, uh, you can't get it back and, yeah. you know, I swear um, I saw it. carpe diem, whatever it is, seize the day and all that. Okay. If you want the rainbow, you've got to put up with the rain. Yeah, of course. Yeah, rough with the smooth. You know, it's not all plain sailing, but, you know, rainbow's beautiful, but it comes because of the rain, which you might not like, so yeah. make the most of everything and, yeah, yeah. good. <laughs> Cat food doesn't smell good, <laughs> but if you don't put up with it, then the little kitten will die. Right, no, Carl, that is a good effort. Now, that one's yours. I mean, obviously, right? Right. Right, no, no, but it's a good effort, right? I mean, it slipped seamlessly into the others. Yeah. I don't think it didn't. No, but it's, it's good. I mean, we knew it, we knew it was that one, but, um, what I will say is, it's good, but what you don't know, maybe subconsciously, is, I mean, it, it, it's n very similar to, uh, the putting up with a rain and the rainbow, but what, that's good. Why do you think that? Well. What, what does mine mean? Well, uh, even, well, even though it smells bad, it's good for something. Right, so see, I, a, I didn't look at it like that. What, what do you look at? Uh, I, I kind of thought... Was yours more specifically about cat food, <laughs> generally? Because <laughs> <laughs> you know normally they like, it's an analogy. Yeah, or a metaphor for something, you know, much well, well, no, the way I... I mean, Do it. Dolly Parton, who I think did the rainbow, rain thing, she wasn't specifically concerned about weather conditions. No. It was a sort of general idea. Yeah, it was all about yeah, life. Yeah, 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 yeah. well that's, that's what I've done. Go on. Okay. Well, I've well, used well, an everyday thing. Yeah. And put it with today's problems, right? Go on. So like, um... My girlfriend, yeah, um, she might like to go shopping for clothes. I hate it. Right. But because of, because I love her, I put up with it. Ah, oh, that's nice. Yeah? Yeah. So, you, you love that little curtain. You can't stand the smell of the stuff you gotta feed it. But because you love it, you go, well, you know, I'll put up with this just for a few minutes and then I can, like, squeeze its head later and give it a little- <laughs> <laughs> Squeeze its little head. No, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well that's just the thing that I do with cats. Put it in a bag and drown it in a lake. <laughs> I can feed it and then I can throw it against <laughs> yeah, the wall. Exactly. So you, yeah. didn't, you didn't see it like that, did you? No, that's very good. So it's about love, is it? It's about putting up with the bad things yeah. for, for, for something you love. Yeah. Well, that's nice. But, but, that's but Carl, good. you seem now to be convinced and rather smug that you've tricked us and that you've fooled us and that we didn't understand it. Well, well no, I say that's your fault, not ours. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not, though. I mean, look, that man in Forrest Gump, he was a bit of a nutter. <laughs> And he, he came up with the life as a box of chocolates thing. Yeah. Now, if that was in this book, you say, oh yeah, brilliant, you know, a good bit of work. But if he was sat here doing the show with you, yeah. you'd be taking the mickey out of him. Sometimes I feel he is. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, Carl, I could, I could, in fact, if people are out there, we're too lazy, could you write down everything Carl's ever said? Because I think we could publish that. Yeah. He said one today, he saw my, um, uh, salamander, it's not a euphemism, <laughs> he saw my salamander and it's just sitting there in the tank. Your exotic pet. Yeah, and he's worried about there's not being a lid on, and he said, I went, what were we worried about? He said, he said, wow, he said it sits there for 24 hours a day, 
obviously planning to get out. <laughs> well, he's got nothing else on his mind, and it's, the, the daft thing is, he has actually got the, like, the lid ripped up a little bit. <laughs> And I'll be looking up there. Yeah. It's going to get out. But what's the worst that could happen? What's oh. it thinking? What do you think it's thinking, this salamander? It's got its eye on the DVD player. <laughs> <laughs> like an RV and be down the market. <laughs> Class. <laughs> right with the I love the fact you had at least three minutes to get that right. I know. Pair and get that right. I know, but my mouth was full of uh, Maryland cookies. Mm. Yeah. You know, last week, mm. th this is, oh, this is blowing your mind. He came in, do you know what he bought for himself at uh, about ten? Penguins. Mm. Who buys penguins still? No. Or wagon wheels. Oh, I've never liked wagon wheels. <laughs> you not know, being a fan? No, no, but I'm oh, sorry about that. It's the clash and rock the casbah. Mm -hmm. Um, talking about records, have I told you that time my brother in law, um, uh, he was moving out of his place, and I think moving in with my sister. And I was about like, um, I don't know, 13. Um, and so he was about, I don't know, 30. And I moved in, and uh, he brought around all, um, uh, his records when he was storage to, to leave him at our house, mm -hmm. right? And he had all these old sort of records, 50s and 60s records, no, I was right. And, uh, um, and, uh, they, uh, put him upstairs. And I was looking through them, and, uh, it's just all like Elvis stuff and Beatles stuff. And there was a mate of mine who loved Elvis, okay? Oh. And he had, um, well, uh, loads of chemicals. <laughs> yeah, he had loads of chemicals, and I was into chemistry. And, uh, he said, let's swap me some chemicals for them. So I sort of nicked about five Elvis singles, and I got all these chemicals. And, uh, and then the guilt just hit me. I just thought, well, he's going to notice that. And I just, I, one night, I just came downstairs and I confessed to my mum. And she went, all right, well, I won't tell him, but you've got to be good. And it's sort of like I was just really, really good for a year. <laughs> and then I remember, um, when I was about 18, uh, my brother was talking about it. And he said, did you ever, um, uh, play those records I left for you? <laughs> Brilliant. He told my mum, he said, these are for Ricky. She just didn't tell she me. She was sharp, wasn't oh. she? She, she used opportunism there. Oh, that's genius. And, uh, that was it. That's, that's but, why I was good. But you've <laughs> never, you've never stolen anything since, have you? No, I don't, I don't, I don't Except know. that spate of, uh, of shoplifting after that to teach your mum a lesson. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I went round, uh, and, uh, arson. Mm. Uh, no, no, I did, I, I, I just couldn't believe it. I, I just, oh, that's it was terrible. I, I remember, um, and I think all kids go through a phase of shoplifting. Well. Um, and, uh, when I was going through it, mm. um, I used to just, just little things, just like magic markers and, uh, magazines, Mars bars, that sort of thing. Yeah. And one day, right, uh, me, me mate, Anthony, his mum called up my mum and said, I've got to, uh, I've got to meet up with you, I've got to have a word with you. And, uh, she said, what about? She said, I don't want to talk about it over the phone. So she goes, oh, right, well, yeah, come round tonight then. So anyway. My mum sees me, she, she don't want to be in an awkward position and like, be a bit embarrassed and what have you. So she sees me and she goes, right, Anthony's mum's coming round, what have you been doing? Yeah. So I go, oh God, I said, I've, I've, I've been nicking stuff. So she goes, like what? So oh, not, not big stuff, I've, I've had a few calculators and uh, Mars bars and stuff. How many? I just work it out. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Works out at seven point two <laughs> per day. So um, how many so calculators do you need? So, <laughs> so it was when that phase. You failed maths. Every, <laughs> everyone wanted a calculator. It was like a trendy thing, wasn't it? Right. Oh yeah. yeah, in Manchester a couple of years ago. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so anyway, so I told her all this and I confessed. To, like, Computers will make it there, won't they? <laughs> confessed that there's magic in the back <laughs> yeah. of battery. <laughs> Go on. Confessed to nicking all this stuff. She comes round. She only wanted to borrow some money. <laughs> Brilliant. She's really oh, I, I don't like asking. I was a bit embarrassed to ask you over the phone, but can I borrow 20 quid? Oh, that's fantastic. And there's me. <laughs> that's great. And it's the oh. sort of thing to yours. And did you and he went, hold on, I'm going to work out the interest on that. I'm back at 10%. percent she will owe you £4.40. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did, dear. So, so your mum was a loan shark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, and uh, I, did, 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 uh, did she mention she that went, you just, stuff just... with, your, with that other, because yeah, what I'm saying is presumably you've got no, your no, mate no, in trouble. No, 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 no. Right, That's ask. great. Anyway, should we have some more music? Yeah, yeah we've been waiting for it. What are you going to play, Carl? We've got the Cooper Temple Claws. Oh, brilliant. Please. Cooper Temple Claws. Who needs enemies? Good question, lads. Nobody. <laughs> Sex FM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. Oh, they should print a little book of those. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> They're great. Oh, how you can relate any song or artist <laughs> to anything else. Easy. Joyful. Easy. Well, yeah, so, uh, m me and, uh, me and Carl went out, uh, for a beer, and it was, uh, it was great, wasn't it? Yeah, enjoyed we start, myself. We started yeah, off, good. and you met my mate Robin, didn't you? Yeah. And, uh, um, some of the stories. Do you want to tell Steve some things about Robin that Robin. you learned? Do you know him well? Yes. Well, um, do you know about his, his worm problem as a kid? Go on. Right. He, uh, what I can remember is he, he had worms as a kid. Not sure how you get them, he never answered me, he was getting a bit touchy about it. Right. I, I, this is like the second time I met him, and I think he was a bit annoyed that Ricky told me about his problem. What, yes. now, what, uh, now straight away, you not being there, instinctively, what do you think went on with this story about worms? My suspicion yeah. is rather like when you told a group of people that Robin had once suckled milk from a cow's udder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah. Did you mention that as well? Yeah. Yeah. Th uh, my suspicion is that, uh, like the cow story, the worm story is not true. But and why, Robin why would he get so sort of uppity about it. Well, imagine because it's if, not true. imagine if he, it, that wasn't the first time he'd done it. Imagine if he did that every single time <laughs> he was with somebody for the first time and Robin was, uh, just met them. He tells that, he will tell that story to anyone. But they do say there's no smoke without fire. <laughs> I also, I, I also told him that the way Robin cured these worms yep. was because the doctor told his mother, right, to hold a piece of ham or cheese near Robin's anus so the worms would come out for the food, and he believed it. I I'll said tell you to, why, though. I said so Robin used to sit on spam to try and get the worms out, and he believed it. Well, Steve, right, do you remember that story about th three or four years ago where there was some bloke in the army? He went away to somewhere, Vietnam or whatever. He was messing about in the woods. Um, <laughs> messing about in the woods? Shouldn't he have been fighting? <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Right, and he, he walked through some lake, and I think he'd cut his toe or something on, on something, and some worm of some sort crawled in the in the gash. Yeah. And um, it, it was in his body, and the doctor said, we've got to get this out of your body. So what they did was, they said, right, the, the thinnest part of something, of your body, that things can crawl through, is on the top of your head. So they wrap some Where the skull is. So they wrap some bacon. <laughs> <laughs> no, they didn't! They did. Ah, that's all right. Everyone... So he's gone in by the toe. Uh, so what we do is, I'll tell you what, that worm's probably heading straight for the head. <laughs> we'll put a bit of bacon on it. The thinnest part of the body is the, the, the skull. Of course it's not the thinnest part of the body. It's the, where your brain case is, isn't it? It's the hard... The skull... There was, there was a reason for it. And it was like the, they, um, stuck some bacon on his head. And As ever, the vital piece of information, uh, <laughs> i.e. the reason, Carl seems to have forgotten. It, because the worm was in, in his body and they said every, you know, everyone likes to smell of bacon. <laughs> Including worms. Even, worm. worm. even, even a Vietnamese lake worm. They, <laughs> they, 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 oh, they love remember bacon. Remember last week, remember last week when I said about the little fella with the bone with no brain and you were proved wrong? No. Please. No, 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 no. We were saying it wasn't a little fella. We were saying it was a stillborn child. It wasn't no, a little you're fella. You're changing it now. You weren't having any of it last Right, week. hang on a minute. Let's just, I'm getting confused. There was a Vietnamese... There wasn't a Vietnamese, there was a Vietnamese snake that went inside of no, a soldier. Worm. A little white maggot or some sort <laughs> that you have to get out of your body because it causes problems. Yes. <laughs> and so in order to get it? out of the he body, they strapped bacon to his head. Yeah. <laughs> that is great. This doctor. And did that work? I think so. They had a picture of him smiling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got what the worm or the bloke? The bloke. Oh, dear. Honest, honestly, I, I hope someone knows a story. Um, right. Just it was about three years ago, I reckon. Okay. And, um, yeah, it did work. GI so, GI bacon. So this is why <laughs> I I went. And so what the worm? The worm burrowed out of his head to get the bacon. Get to the bacon. Right. <laughs> Um <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So I this is it. this is why when Robin was telling his story, I I was a little bit disappointed if it wasn't true. Right. Because in a way You know Robin's never been to Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what I, I would do you really think that Robin well as Robin said at the time, Carl, why would I sit on ham then tell Ricky Gervais? <laughs> it's a very good point. Because if he was a kid, you do you do have things like that as a kid. Right. It's the telling Ricky Gervais though. Yeah. And then, yeah. oh, bless him. Okay. Uh, and then anyway, then, uh, Robin left and, uh, I tried to chase him but he got away and he <laughs> knows that we, uh, yeah. Um, and then we had a few pints and then, uh, Carl embarked on some of the greatest stories ever told. Have you, can you tell the story about your dad? 
Let me run it by- I haven't spoke to him all week, so let me run it by him. Okay, play records. Cause, uh, you know. What we got? We've got, uh, one of Steve's- Yeah, tunes. well, bizarrely enough, this comes from the, uh, Teachers 2 soundtrack, oh. the soundtrack to the, uh, the current TV series. There's a slight whiff of nepotism in the air. Yeah. Rick, would you like to explain why? Well, that's why you're doing it. And, uh, my girlfriend, uh, worked on it. But, yeah. um, you were gonna play this anyway, weren't you? Well, I was, actually. Bizarrely enough, I was gonna play some I Am Clute, and, uh, this is from, as I say, the, uh, the Teachers soundtrack, and this is called To You. It's a good track. <laughs> That's I Am Clute, a uh, track called To You from the uh, Teacher's soundtrack. That's also got, uh, I know it's the Electric Soft Parade, The Hives, Star Sailor, Feeder, uh, Turin Breaks, Mercury Rev on there. It's a good little collection. Lovely. Carl, uh, has just had confirmation. He's looking smug because someone phoned up and went, it is true, it's a Lao Gai Chi worm and you wrap bacon around your head. That's all the bloke knew as well. Yeah. And his name was Gary. Yeah. So I'm not having it. No. And he said, he said, see, that's why the Robin thing isn't so weird. He said, but when you said he tried it with cheese, he said I was having none of it. <laughs> He's got standards. <laughs> Strokes, hard to explain. Like Carl, really? Yes, yes. So, Carl, concentrate. Yeah, go on. So, we'll, um, we'll, we'll leave the worm with the bacon wrap around the head, shall we? Well, if you're ever caught in the jungle. Yeah, always carry some Bit of Danish. <laughs> Good advice. <laughs> Lovely. So, would you like to start on your, uh, to Steve, because I've heard all these. Um, uh. Well, we won't do them all. Well, um, well, st we'll start off with the, uh, the Mr. Freeze. Tell Steve the story of Mr. Freeze. This is the first time he nearly died. This, this is the most serious of the lot, really. So, um, what it was, do you know, like, um, I don't know if your mum and dad did the same thing, but, like, they do the weekly shopping on, on like a Friday. Yeah. So when when you got to Thursday, there won't be much stuff left in the cupboard. It'd just be like you know your Jacob's crackers and stuff mm. like that. So when they when they'd been to the supermarket and they came back, I was like, uh, you know, what's that saying? Like a pig in, you know, I, I loved it. It was like loads of food coming in, loads of biscuits. He loads nearly of, said, what is that saying? He nearly said pig in shit. <laughs> right. It's not the same. <laughs> yeah. Right. So um. So yeah, all this food comes in. Thank God like, he didn't. <laughs> 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 Otherwise he'd have been in trouble. That's true enough. Because he's, he's culpable for our actions because exactly. he's the producer. <laughs> so technically, oh. that twat's in charge, yep. go on. Right, so anyway, so there's loads of food and I'm like, oh yeah, look at this, some chocolate biscuits and, uh, you know, penguins and stuff. Bacon. So, and um, bacon. <laughs> Just in case, you never know. So, um, so anyway, my mum and dad's putting the food away. Me and our kid are like, he's already grabbed something, gone back upstairs. It's like feral children. <laughs> it's, it's like a quest for fire. <laughs> and then they run upstairs. <laughs> it was, it, what did you sit under the bed, gnawing at some sort of pig trotter? So, so I saw, um, do you remember Mr. Freeze Pops? I do, yes. Yeah, so well, they're kind of like popsicles, icicles. Yeah, they? but really long, like yeah, a foot yeah, long, yeah. right? Yeah. So I thought, I'll have one of them, so I grabbed it. Went for the nutritious stuff first. Absolutely. And, uh, and like my mum and dad are putting this stuff away and what have you. And I, I rip it open and knock it back. Right, straight away, just right back like Swallow that. Swallow it, right straight away, yeah. But it, it went down the wrong way, right? <laughs> what, so I what was like, your shirt? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was like, oh god, I, I can't breathe. And my mum and dad didn't, I, didn't even know what I'd eat. Do you know what I mean? It went, it, I ate it so f f so quick. Yeah. And uh, I'm sort of tapping my mum on the back, going, uh, uh, she's going, oh god, you know, he's, he's choking again because I was always choking. <laughs> if it was one thing, I don't know if I got like a small throat. <laughs> but, but I mean, even Ricky knows I can't drink that much, can I? Yeah. Do you know, or I'm eat pebbles. A, I'm, <laughs> I'm not a, f a quick drink drinker. I'd always, um, I think I'm scared of like swallowing stuff. Yeah. And uh, it was like bottle tops and mint imperials and stuff. I was always, I was always choking on stuff. <laughs> oh, so, so anyway, she's going, oh god, what's he picked up on that now? <laughs> Drop it! Drop it! So, it, 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 hit his, it hit his nose with a stick! So I was going, oh, I'm choking. At this point, my dad had like, I think he'd put his, his share away, you know, his food away, and he'd gone his to- His share! Yeah. I love it! Yeah. He'd, he'd gone to watch like, Winner takes all or whatever <laughs> in a lounge. And I, I was in the kitchen and I was starting to like, just, I didn't care anymore, do you know what I mean? I hadn't, I, I just got to that point where I wasn't struggling anymore. You just thought I'm done I just for. was like falling to the ground. And my mum's going, you know, get in here, I think it's serious. And my dad comes in and sort of starts shouting at me saying that's what you get for being greedy. <laughs> he didn't even know what I'd eaten. Well, it was, it was the moment to teach you a lesson, <laughs> So he's there like that and my mum's going, oh, look at him. And my lips were going purple and my eyes were rolling into the back of my head. You look like Marilyn Manson. And, uh, so anyway, she grabbed me from behind and did that, that fireman thing. The Heimlich manoeuvre. Yeah. And, uh, you know, winded me. 
and it came up and I was alright. What, the whole right. popsicle came flying back out? I don't, I don't, you see, that's what I don't understand. Cause there was no, nothing it, there. No, it's just a little bit, no, it swells up, doesn't it? Cause it irritated it, so it went down your, just sort of like, your epiglottis, it went down the wrong way, like it went into your air canal instead of your so, throat. And it, it sort of, it, it, it sort of spasms and that's the, that's the fear, you just gotta calm it down and relax. So that in time I would have been alright yeah, anyway. you don't, um, Well no, yeah. you might have. So that's, so, 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 so that's hang on, one. So, but, but, so no, 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 but the weird thing is, like for, like three days after that, I felt like a sort of a special person. <laughs> I wasn't, I went to school. I was I'm saying nothing. I, I did full days. <laughs> <laughs> a special needs person. <laughs> Yeah. I went- I went to school the next three days after that. I didn't like wag it or anything, I did full days. I love that. Three days, turn everything <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. After yeah. three days you thought, screw it. Yeah, well, did, did a quick history yeah. exam. Yeah. Mm. Right, next that one. Weird. That's Popsicle. That's Popsicle hell, we call that. Right, next one. Uh, which one's the next one? Oh, what about your paper round? Right, the paper round one. Uh, paper round, I'd still say it's the best job I've ever had. <laughs> And he means it! No, I really oh. enjoyed it. It's like, you oh. know, you, you, <laughs> you don't have to work with anyone else, right? Oh. So you make your own rules. Just think of that. Um, yeah. you know, um, you sort of- You're around. spreading information well, yeah. to people. Yeah, Quite information. giving a service. Yeah. And no one else is around, you know, you can just do what you want and think about stuff whilst you're cycling around on your bike. It's really good. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, can you imagine the stuff he's thinking about when he's driving around. <laughs> I, know, I can't. <laughs> oh, so <laughs> getting in the head of a salamander. <laughs> so anyway, I, I loved it, and even though I only got like fifty p a day, right? No matter what the weather was like and stuff, I used to get up at half past four and uh, go and do the round. And um, why did you get up at half past four? Because I wanted to watch the Pink Panther at five thirty. So I wanted to get me paper round done. I said, why didn't you watch the Pink Panther? And then, and then he, went, he went, oh, I can't sit there thinking I've got my paper round to do. <laughs> He'll ruin it for him. Yeah. So is it a good job or not? So 4.30 four, four I was up, up and about. And this morning it was like winter, a really bad winter, bad snow, you know, freezing cold, really windy and all that. And my mum said to me before I went to bed, she said, don't be getting up tomorrow. I'll give you the 50p. I said, it's not about the 50p. <laughs> so, you know, people want the papers and stuff. <laughs> so, um... Conscientious. <laughs> so anyway, I went to bed thinking, you know, that's it. I'm, I'm, I've told her I'm still going, so, you know, whatever. Go to sleep, get up in the morning and uh, put all my kit on. And I, I used to have layers of clothing on because it was really cold. They had like a big anorak on with the fur on. I had like waterproof pants and I got my paper round bag. And uh, I went downstairs to get out and tried to open the door and it was locked. I thought, oh, God. So, uh, uh, so she'd locked it so I couldn't go out. So I'm searching around the house looking for the keys. She must have hid them somewhere. I thought, oh God, you know, I've, I've got the papers to do. So I thought, how can I get out? So I went upstairs, climbed out of the bathroom window God. Right, and to try and jump out of the bed bathroom window onto the porch. But the problem was, I had so much gear on, I was like the Michelin man. <laughs> so I could hardly, I could hardly move as it is. Yeah. And I try to get out of the window, and I, I, I'm like, try to stretch down like that, get me foot on the, on the porch. And my bag got caught on like the hook of, do you know like how you have a hook so you can put the window open? Right, yeah, The yeah, little yeah, arm goes yeah. on. My bag had got caught on that. I was holding on to the, like, the, the wall and my foot on the thing so I couldn't sort of pull it, pull it away in case I pulled it away and then fell on my head. Yeah. So I'm stuck there. Dangling. Dangling. My dad comes back from working nights. Yeah. He thinks I'm a burglar. <laughs> Gets out his gun. So, <laughs> so he's shouting and stuff, going mad and going, Dad, it's me. And he had to give us a hand using a- <laughs> He's heard that wily trick in Manchester before. <laughs> <laughs> he had to help me using a washing prop thing. A big stick. What did he do? Well, he said, just start hold on for your dear life, and I I'll sort of push the paper bag off the hook. Why and didn't he go upstairs and sort it out? It was at that point where I was in the middle, there was nothing you could do, do you know what I mean? Mm. It's right. at that point where you've just got to make a decision. Yeah. And by the time you go upstairs, who knows what might have happened. Sure. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You've got to act there and then, don't <laughs> listen around. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so and you can hear downstairs, now here he is, the Pink Panther. <laughs> yeah. Dad! Pink Panther. Hurry up! Pink Panther. Ever so pink! <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that, that was close to death, because I must have been about 30 foot in the air. So, he th uh, uh, to cut a long story short, he gave me about four or five near death experiences, and he went, and the whole point of this, he went, so that's why I think I'm gonna die of something horrible, like cancer. And I went, why? He went, right, you ready for this? Yeah. He said, well I don't check my balls. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> he said, 
I don't like the feel. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, Carl, always check your balls. Do you I check don't like the feel? Why don't you like the feel of your own balls? They just, I mean, you know that I don't like bodies anyway. Right. Do you know what I mean? It worries me a bit that you've got all that going on in your body, right, and your skin's keeping it all in place. <laughs> <laughs> Stop, 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 stop. We're going down a whole other avenue of discussion. Let's play a track. Let's come back to it. All right. This is Carl, the, uh, producer of Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant on XFM 104.9. We're playing out some of the best bits. Hope you're enjoying it. Here's another one. His homework was to come up with those stupid lateral thinking problems. Uh, we might, we maybe should give an, a, an example of the, uh, Oh, um, genre. Romeo and Juliet, right? Romeo's asleep on the bed, Juliet's on the floor, covered in water and broken glass. What happened? And you ask all these stupid questions, and it's, Romeo's a cat and Juliet's a goldfish. Again, Awful. what am I thinking? Yeah. Yeah, come on then, Carl. Right, um... Yeah. There's a bloke lying on the floor, right? He's cut his head, blood's coming out of his head, <laughs> and all his mates come running up, and they're all stood round him. Yeah. And, uh, they don't take their hats off to, as a mark of respect. That why, is outrageous. Why didn't they take their hats off? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm uh, laughing, but it's probably as good as the oh, real ones. Absolutely. A bloke's fallen with his. Yeah. He's lying on the floor. Yeah. He's dead. Yeah. His mates come running is, up. Is, and I, oh. Wasn't it important? Was it important that his head was cut? Um, I don't know. I mean, would, it, would, it, would it be okay if he'd have been wearing a hat? He wouldn't have been dead if he was wearing a hat. Well, what's your answer? No, you meant to answer questions. You don't just go, what's your answer? You say, where's the answer? You go, no, and I have to guess. It's obviously like sort of motorcycle stunt team or a parachute Why, why didn't they take their hats off? Because they're probably still on the motorbikes or something, or... Well, yeah, but if you mark, mark a respect to someone, you could take your helmet off. <laughs> Angry. What? They're parachutists. <laughs> why, can they, why can't they take their helmets off? Because they're still they're coming down from the sky. Still, but he's on the floor dead. Well, yeah, they, but they can look down and see him on the floor. Are they on the floor, Carl? They're on the floor as they're well. They're walking, aren't they? Yeah, well, they sort of stood there looking at him. They're stood there. Yeah. They're stood on the floor looking they're at him. They're soldiers. Why? But why? If they're Because it might be in a battle zone. They, they might have their helmets zone. on. And he's, he's been no. shot in the head. No. They, well, that does work. <laughs> you see, this is my point. That one works. <laughs> That one works. Unless you've given us a piece of information where that doesn't work, what, yeah. what, what's the difference? Why, do, why is yours different to he's been shot in the head in the trenches and they're looking at him and they keep their helmets on? I just don't, don't think it matters as much. If they're in the trench, they're already <laughs> guarded a little bit. So th they could take their hats off. It's the best mate, for God's sake. <laughs> I said he's dwelling on this. Are they normal hats? Well, no, don't no, no, the answer. No! Don't get right! What right. kind of hats are they? Baseball well, hats? If I told you what sort of hats they are, you'd have the answer. Whoa! Okay, I've got to guess what sort of a hat it is then, have I? Right. Uh, um, is it a trilby? No. Is it a bowler? I know what it is. What? They're spacemen. No. Oh, that's a good that one. That one works as well. That's, yeah. This is my point. I like that one a lot. It works. He's fallen on the moon, and there are oh, not that the moon happened, it was set yeah, up, wasn't it, in the studio, you know. we know that, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, Carl, what's your answer? Builders on a building site. <laughs> Why is that different to soldiers? <laughs> because bricks don't fall in wars. <laughs> <laughs> but bullets fly. <laughs> right. Let's play a record and we'll come back to it, Carl. Oh. While you think about what you've done. Oh yeah. Uh, you've uh, embarrassed let's yourself. Let's play some classic suede. Yeah, and this is for David and Kieran. I think you wanted a <laughs> bit of bit of Butler. FM 104.9, I'm Richard Bays with me, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington, Steve. <laughs> well, we were talking about the news just now, and uh, there was a story I heard in the week, I think it was on the radio, and I don't know all the details, but what I heard was that a number of, I think it was Falkland, uh, maybe Gulf War, war veterans were, I think, suing or complaining to the government because they wanted compensation for post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but it seems to me that if you're in the army and you're a soldier, a certain degree of trauma is kind of inevitable. I mean, after all, if you're any good at your job, you are going to see people getting killed. So I don't understand what the ins and outs of it are. I don't <laughs> know why. No, he's already came back and Tony Blair met him and go, all right, well, not really, no. Go on, what's the matter? Well, if she, there was people shooting at us and everything, it was all muddy. Well, calm down, don't cry. Well, I will. 
<laughs> there was a drill sergeant just came shouting, saying, look at you, stupid boy, where's this gun's not training, And I just cleaned the gun and it was fine, and now he's telling me to clean it again. Yeah, the boots, uh, they were, they were oh, shiny. Well, he's got to do that, it's more distant. His neck was as big as his head. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but you don't know what they, you know. I don't know what the ins and outs of it are, but, um. Uh, is it, what you got to do is make sure you know what you're going into, that's why I do, you got to check the small print. So if I was, you know, going over to, like, the, the fault runs or, you know, the golf's, I'd put my hand up and go, will, uh, will it be horrible? And I go, you at the back, yes? It will be horrible. <laughs> it, it will be horrible, yeah. yes. It will be horrible. There will be shooting and lots of death and everything. I, I go, right, I'm not gonna go. And I go, <laughs> okay that, then. Okay. That should be fine, yeah. Should be fine, yeah. Just got to go. It, does anyone else scared about this? Uh, pretty much all of us. Okay, then well, we won't send anyone <laughs> yeah, then. Exactly. My um, brother, my brother went into the army, right, cos, um, cos he couldn't get a normal job. And my dad said, you know, if you don't get a job by such a date, that's it, son, you're going in the army. <laughs> And, um, oh. so when, when was the Falklands? Was it about eight? Eighty-one. Right. And he joined back in, like, eighty-one or something. And, uh, he, he, I don't know, he was an older shot or something. Oh, yeah. And, uh, he wrote back to me mum saying, uh, you know, what a bad time to join, bad time in this. So, she wrote... <laughs> what a bad time to join? That's so sweet, Carl, isn't it? That's like, dear dad, yeah, well done. Um, <laughs> don't know if you've noticed. Yeah. Uh, I was on the doll, that, that's for sure. Uh, thank you for joining, uh, a month before the Belgrano. Anyway. And, uh, go on. My mum called up, spoke to the sergeant, and said, can you leave him out of this one? Can you leave him out of this one? What, he, the Falkland War? He's only just joined and she called him Chuck, which he got done for. Like, she, she's one of them, I think it's a northern thing, like, saying, how are you, Chuck? Yeah. And she called the sergeant Chuck, and he, he, he the sergeant said to her, like, my brother, uh, your mum, you know, she's called up and asked if you can not go. Which, uh, of course, you know, I mean, uh, it, it, w we'll see how it goes. But can what? you tell What her do you mean? Why did the sergeant even entertain this? Well, <sighs> Pilkington, come here. Your mum's been giving me a bit of earache. Now listen, tell her I've told you, but can you call her, because she was really, she called me Chuck and everything. Can you call her and say you don't mind? Well, not really. Oh, please, because I've promised her, uh, say you want to go. No, please, say you want to go. Why was he entertaining this phone call? Because he was new to the army, I suppose. Who? No, I mean the sergeant. Brother. Uh, I don't know, so maybe they do that. So what happened? Did he didn't go in the end? So he didn't go, no. You can't do it! So that's got, ludicrous! I love it though. Okay, we're over the top. No, in. I've, I've got a note. Yeah. Is this, is this really your mum? Yeah. Okay, no, this seems to be in order. They, you, it, cause I noticed it says, um, uh, I do not want to go into the army, I don't want to go, go and fight, and it's crossed out and it's going, my mum says don't Yeah. Go. Now you didn't write this yourself. No, no, my mum wrote this. Okay, you definitely wrote this yourself. You're, you're gonna have to just, um, fill envelopes. No, I'm, I'm sure if, if he was needed he would have had to go, but I think they made a bit of a special effort and he sort of said, oh. Well it wasn't conscription anyway. Oh no, I was seeing But were the, the other soldiers thing, going around just going, <laughs> Bilkington! <laughs> No, he ended up being a mechanic in there, and he got kicked out for, um, going for a packet of fags in a tank. <laughs> <laughs> what? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do you mean he nipped down the shops yeah. in a tank? Yeah. I don't okay. believe that, Carl, you've Honest made that. Honest to God, that, and he went off with the sergeant's wife. So that didn't help, and he ended up getting kicked out. Sorry, your, your brother's a genius. I love this, I love this. Well, first of all, um, he gets a call from his mum, go and let him up, and he goes, oh God. Then he goes, uh, uh, where is, where's Pilkington? His mum's on the phone. He's, where is he? he um, he's near your house, Sarge. Near my house? Well, why is, no, no reason. Uh, well, when he comes back, when he's finished, tell him his mum called. And can he get me a packet of hands? <laughs> tell him to walk this time. Wow. This is ludicrous. The, so the sergeant phoned out that he was sleeping yeah, I, with his wife? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, did, I was Did your mum phone out and say, let him off? <laughs> 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 so let him off this time. Can he yeah, yeah. That's yeah. fantastic. But he misses it. I mean, I haven't seen him for about eleven years, but ever since he came out he's just kept getting into trouble and that. In the army, you know, people slag it off, but I think if you're a certain type of person, it's, it's good for it you. It didn't straight him, either, did it? No. He was going down the shops in a tank, he was shagging someone no, behind their it's yeah. really weird, it's like back then, he was like a proper adult and he had a house and he collected crystal with his wife and that. <laughs> and now, he hasn't got any of that. Has he got the wife? No. Has he got the crystal? Don't think he has. And he oh, hasn't right, got the Seriously, I haven't seen him for about 11 or 12 years. Oh, so I haven't even spoken to him. Start, uh, Carl's stories always start off nice and funny, and then they just leave me empty and slightly yeah. depressed. I don't know whether to hug him or shoot him, put him <laughs> out of his misery. Can we take Carl to the- uh, phone in if you think I should take Carl to the vets and have him put down. Cause it's just too stressful. 
<laughs> this is what I'd like to leave you, uh, with a song for the ladies. Start this on the edge of town from the amazing album of the same name, Springsteen. See you next week. Bye. Feeder, come back around on XFM 104.9. You're listening to Ricky Gervais. Yeah, I'm with him as well, Steve Merchant. I was thinking of dropping that. What? I was thinking of dropping that, just going, because it's just too, that's all that. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilgerton too. I mean, get to the music, so it's, hi, I'm Ricky Gervais, this is XFM. Sure. Here's Radiohead. Yeah. So, like, come out, that was Radio and XFM, I'm Ricky Gervais. Tony Blair, what's he all about? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That sort of, Snap, that, on yeah. a fast, because I quite, uh, on a serious note, and you've always been saying it, um, I listened to an old show, because when Carl was compiling those things, I listened to an old show, and I listened to me, and I'm, I'm really concentrating now, because I sounded like the most inarticulate, brain-damaged old drunk <laughs> I have ever heard given a show. Yeah. I mean, I was shocked, not finishing sentences, leaving out words, slurring, just doing noises yeah. that you understand because you know me. Yeah. So I'm really going to make an effort for the listener. Yeah. It's not going to happen, is it? You're going to give up after about three But I records. thought you were joking. And I thought it was like, oh, he's mm -hmm. taking it there. Did it yeah. then, you see? Again, I don't quite know what that sentence meant. No, but... Well, of course, I've got also your body language and your facial yeah. gestures, but obviously the listeners have got nothing else. Got they've got just got the in. voice. They've yeah. just got the voice for it. That's all they've got. That's all they can rely on. Yeah. And, uh, and when Carl Pilkinson is the man holding the show together... When he's that's the most quite articulate. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. How, how did I come across? You came across as lovely. I mean, I, I did an interview yesterday, right, and I was trying to describe you to this journalist, and I was going, it's like a cat can talk. Because the things you say, I just want to know what your world is. You know when a cat comes in, you go, where have you been? And it looks as you're like, you know, you could, it can nearly understand you. And you're like, I wonder, I'd love to know what that cat thinks. And with you, it's almost like we've got one. Yeah. Yeah. Did you like that? No, you no, can no. also lick your own no. testicles, I think, can you? <laughs> so, okay. yeah. Do you play the doves? <laughs> Caught by the river on XFM 104.9. You're listening to Ricky Gervais. <laughs> Welcome. How are we having a lovely Saturday? <laughs> Were you asked to appear on Celebrity Fat Club? No, I, I, uh, no. Was there I wasn't. any? Was there? Was there? Seriously, did an invite? No, come I, in? don't, I don't know. They did. I, I, I knew about it, and I was waiting for the call, and I was yeah. going to be insulted, but it didn't come. It didn't come. It didn't. How come. much are you looking forward to it? <laughs> I'm quite excited about it. I, I, I really am excited to it. Yeah. I don't yeah, know if very... people know. Are you aware of this, Carl? This is this Celebrity Fat Club. It's a new uh, one of those reality shows. It's ten celebrities, I think. They're all overweight, uh, and they've got to lose weight over the course of the series. And they're um. And they're celebrities. And they're celebrities. That's why I call it that. Celebrity Fat Club. Sorry yeah. for the go. Well, I'm very excited because one of them is, you know that guy who was in Pop Idol but didn't win in the end, that really big fat guy, Rick, Rick. Waller. Fats Waller, as I call him. And, uh, I was reading about him on the, in the, uh, on the web earlier. Um, it says, uh, he's been told to lose 17 stone. Because they reckon he might be dead by the age of 40 if he doesn't lose weight. Seriously. How old is he now? I don't know how old he is. He's only in his 20s, isn't he? Well, that's still a good but 20 it says, years it says, of it, it says uh, he was shocked to find he weighed 31 stone when he stepped on the scales at the start of the show. 31 stone? 31 stone. But I love that's the fact- That's really big. I like the fact it says he was shocked to find he weighed it. Yeah. I had no inclination. I'd got- I'd got- I'd got- I kept my eye off the board. <laughs> exactly. I? That must be all those breakfasts. I haven't stood on the scales for years and I didn't know how much I weighed, Rick told the son. 31 stone, right, that is having- that is- that is having a man on your back and carrying a man in your arm. Just walk, yeah. basically two men are going everywhere. It is obscene. Because he looks- have you seen him? He looks like one of those people who's wearing one of those inflatable sumo outfits. Yeah. He's just a little head and like a sort of eye. We're not- we're not having a go at, um, fat people. I'm having a go at him, Rick. No, because it might be glandular. It's not, it's green. <laughs> exactly. Do you know what? I- this is true. I- when I did- I did that Room 101, and I did one they cut out completely. I don't think I'd cut it out on taste. I think it was just too long. Um, and I- and one of the ones I put in was fat people who say it's glandular. Right? And they'd done the research and 2% of obese people can claim it's glandular. The rest, they just eat too yeah. much. But right? the thing about Waller is he was going on there, gone on the telly, going, it's good, what a wonderful role model I am for people who don't conform to the usual pop star sort of stereotype. No, you're not a role model for anyone. You are a fat pig of a man. I'm sorry, right, but you are, no, right. Rick, but it's, be honest with you, it is obscene. It's not his weight that d disturbs me more, it's his gums. Well. They're all, oh, they've been through a lot. <laughs> Yeah. Haven't they? <laughs> they have been The weight does consume me slightly. Did you- do you remember when he did his version of I Will Always Love You? 
Yeah, but the, the I thought he was just singing about it like a buffet or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, outside the chip shop. <laughs> yeah, go away, Mister Waller. Yeah, Do Do people... just just let me watch the uh, kebab rotate <laughs> once more. No, can I lick the fat off the floor? No, <laughs> you can't. I just imagine those people who run all you can eat buffets when they hear him coming, they shut yeah. the door. We it's close. like a, it's one of those late twenties speakeasy. The front changes <laughs> into like a laundrette. <laughs> Just move on, fats. It's not. <laughs> it's, I can smell chip fat. No, 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 no. Move but, on. On you but, go. But um, I mean, we're not Olympic fat Brits. They are so fat. The thirty-one stone is sort of you know quite big. But the American, that one. Did you see that one? Seriously, we talked about it before. That one on Jerry Springer, and he was seventy-five stone. Did you see seventy-five him? stone? He was in his bed. Honestly, it looked like a. It looked like a. Um, uh, I don't know, sort of molten lava yeah. in his bed, and it was really, it was actually sad, and I was really sad because he was, you know, he was in tears and he was going, "This is it, I'm going to do it." And Jerry Springer took the wall down and they got him that to get him in a special ambulance and everything. But my point is this, right? When he got to say fifty stones, didn't he go? That's a lot, isn't it? I gotta be careful for a human. Exactly. You know, for, for <laughs> yeah. someone that lives on land. Yeah. That <laughs> yeah, is. Exactly. That is. I tell you, what the, I mean. The fact is, they have to have special weighing equipment, so wasn't that a clue? That must have been. The fact they had to get in someone from next door to lift up a bit to tell him yeah. how much he weighed. Yeah, the fact that he featured on the Ordnance Survey map <laughs> should have been a clue <laughs> that We've given you your own mess. Yeah, you are, yeah. Stop eating. eating. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> 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 Ian It's amazing to hear that, isn't it? It's Sugar. fantastic. It's such I can't a change great tune. I was listening to Copper Blue, the album from which yeah. I was taken again. It's just fantastic. Old it really moldy. Was old moldy. Moldy old dough, yeah. as I call oh, him. Exactly. Bob. You've got a real problem with Rick Waller, haven't you? I just- he's, I, he's he, he turns my stomach. I know, but don't- Because he's arrogant that. as well, though. Exactly. That's don't, the problem. Don't, don't explain to people that- No, he know, is a bit it's arrogant. His, it's his, it's his old thing that you, it's the whole package, so yeah. to speak, that you don't Well, there's another thing in this quote, because uh- It's not just the fact that he eats too much. He, uh, he tried, apparently, to lose some weight. And uh, it says he said the first month I lost eleven pounds. The next I lost a stone, but in the third my body did somersaults and I put on nine pounds. I had a slip up. Mm. I can't say when, why, or how, but it just sneaked up on me. Yeah, I don't believe it. Yeah, don't That's believe it just sneaked that, up on that him. That body's never done a somersault no. in its life. No, it just uh, sneaked, sneaked up on him. Yeah, I, 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 it was that. the cakes again. Yeah, <laughs> it was the same old cakes as before. It was exactly the same. Sleep, one. sleep eating. Yeah, it's called. It was the KFC bucket again. Oh, it was the family dear. size KFC bucket oh, for breakfast. Dear. Poor man. The other thing is that the, I don't think that's a very good shock tactic for a doctor to tell a twenty-something. Well, to be honest, you've got twenty years to live. Yeah, that's not. You know, and when I was 20. twenty, the thought of dying at forty was fine. Yeah, I didn't want to live to forty. Yeah. I just thought, oh, what can you do when you're forty? Yeah, just laying around <laughs> doing nothing, <laughs> eating, eating cheese. cheese. And then you got there, <laughs> and you discovered. <laughs> no, but someone said dreams came true. Sophie here sent me something, and she said, I, I realise you're not Graham Norton, but I had to send you this. And she sent me the top of a little cream cheesy thing, and it's, it's, the brand name is Gervais. How oh, odd that is. Have you been, they've named a cheese after I think, you? I think it's a big French company, and this is from the Czech Republic, it's all over Europe. And so, it That would be a dream come true, it, wouldn't it, if they named a cheese after no, you? No, I think it's, I think it's, uh, probably, you know, ancestors, and so I've cheeses in my blood. Sure. Quite it literally. It literally is, yeah. yeah. It, Another it, heavy Friday it, night, was it? It, 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 it comes out of pores like those Play-Doh things. Yeah. I can squeeze out different shapes. Jane, I bring the Stilton in. <laughs> it's Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this isn't nice. fried. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, so um, we can't really have a go at Rick Waller. I, 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 I eat too much, but, but you, I, yeah, I, but I you're not big. I mean, one of the other contestants on that on the uh, Fat Club, oh, yeah, Club is uh, another one is Jono, Jono Coleman. Oh, we love Jono. Now Jono, he's, he, I don't know, you know Jono. He's oh. that guy. He does um, he used to be on TV, and I think he does a breakfast show on a rival station, doesn't he? He's happy, isn't he? He's, he's so cheery, and he's a really nice bloke, Jono. It's but funny because he does a breakfast show on Heart, which is is wrecking his own. There's a bit of irony. <laughs> I love Carl. <laughs> Thanks, Carl. Do you know I, what I mean? Yeah, I love no, you. I can see where you're coming from. Yeah, that's good. But we've met John yeah. a couple of times. We saw him at a couple of, not wishing to say not uh, to show off, but a couple of awards dues. Yeah. And that's showing off. But like people would have seen dead there. Well, yeah, but yeah. we <laughs> we went to one where everyone was in like tuxedos oh, or suits yeah. and ties. Not Jono. <laughs> Jono was wearing a pair of Bermuda shorts. Big Bermuda and a shorts. Hawaii knee length Bermuda shorts with just these little. But I saw him again another feet. time and he had shorts on. At yeah. a similar event, and I've seen him since in the street, and he's all. I don't think, 
I'm wondering if he can wear trousers. I don't think he can actually wear trousers. I don't know if there's a medical reason for that, whether he's just, his no, legs th are too fat. I think the material is a waste of money. I think it's just yeah. that you can get shorts that big and they're comfortable and, uh, you know, why do, I mean, to be quite honest, well, why, I don't want to squeeze into a tuxedo anyway. Mm. So, uh, if you can go, I'd love to turn to those things in Bermuda shorts. Well, of course. Flip flops. You know, but do you think he started off by wearing, maybe he just had the upper half as a tuxedo with the tie and, and then everything. the shorts for And the shorts underneath and he would just have to come in to kind of sneak behind, you know, a, a sideboard. Potted plant. Or a potted plant or his kids, bring his kids ahead of him. Yeah. You know, and you're wearing clothes, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, of course I am. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah in yeah, you yeah. go, in you go. Kids move a bit. Well, no. Of course I'm wearing trousers. Why would I? I'm wearing trousers. And they just thought, that oh, this isn't fooling yeah. anyone. So uh, now I'm going to make a wacky effort to sort of, you know. The next zone it. is, I've heard he's going in a grass skirt and a mm. garland around his, and he's yeah. going to come in limboing. But you you did ask if you could go to the BAFTAs in a dressing game, didn't you? <laughs> just so, for ease. Yeah. Yeah. But, come um, on. Right, is this talking about diets and stuff, right? Go on. They've come up with a drug that, um, they, they tested it out on a mouse, right? They said, they said, you know, it's a problem that weight, weight is a big issue in the world and, you know, a lot of people are depressed and that, probably like Rick Waller. Well, right? I'm depressed looking at Rick Waller. Oh, well, you know. Oh. I mean, you could, you could sort out Rick by, you know, John O is an old man, he's got loads of money. He's not old. No, but he's getting on a bit, right? He's about no, but hang on a minute. You've... What I mean is he does his own shopping, right? So, I bet it's Sorry, hard. Sorry, what do you mean? Because he's like, uh, how old is he? Thirty-five. Right? Oh, he's got loads of money, he does his own shopping, so when he yeah. goes to the supermarket and he passes, you know, the, the sponge cake section, <laughs> it must be tough when you've got loads of money to burn that you go, oh, just one more. Yeah. One more. No, I, I, just, uh, we are getting close to libel here, I think. No, 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 <laughs> but I'm saying how it is, because I've, right. I've tried, like, losing a little bit of weight. Have you? And it is difficult when you, you know, you're in Waitrose and you see a little chocolate muffin and think, oh, <laughs> one more and I'll do without... Do you like a little chocolate muffin now and well, again? Yeah, right. Is that your favourite thing? So the thing a is, let him finish his point. So the thing is, right, now with Rick, he lives at home with his mum, so why doesn't his mum just say, I'm gonna buy less this week, and if you eat it all, you're not getting any more. Yeah. <laughs> that, that sort that Does out. he live a with short, his mum? Sharp shot. I, I bet he does. I bet he does. <laughs> so he, you, you don't actually know if this is true <laughs> or not. No, but, but anyway, right? So this this drug they've come up with. <laughs> they've tested this on mice, haven't they? They've tested it. <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm worried if they haven't tested it on mice. <laughs> Thank God for that. They're, it's definitely been tested on mice. Definitely. They, they fed a mouse a load of cake. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> and it went a little bit chubby, and he said, right, stop a minute. And then they gave it this drug that yeah. makes you lose weight. Yeah. <gasps> and it, its weight went down, but the only bad so side effect was its eyes were popping out. <laughs> <laughs> well, that seems, that seems to be fine then. <laughs> let's give it to Jono. <laughs> there doesn't seem to be any problem. Oh, let's, let's, uh, uh, yeah, Rick should get some I of that. Love. Yes, truth, Doc, look at these. Oh, <laughs> Jesus, Jono, your eyes are popping out. That happened to the mice. Mm. Sorry? <laughs> that happened to the mice. Mm. But what, what would you do? do you mean? That's the option. <laughs> But, like, what do you mean that's the option? So, so I love the fact that your choice is either being like a fat, happy man who has the odd sponge cake, or a stick man with eyes on stalks. I mean, Steve's <laughs> chosen that. All right, calm down. Oh, I thought we were slagging off Rick Waller. Sorry, fat mate. people. Sorry, mate. Let's have a go at the fat people before yeah, we start on me, Rick. Yeah, no, I didn't. I forgot. You know what I mean, it's like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I got some issues, even body issues. You I know. know. But they, I mean, Rick Waller's grotesque, you know. Yeah, sorry about I'm that. I'm just a little bit weird. <laughs> I mean, do you know what I mean? Yeah, should we play a song? And well, I'm just a little bit offended. That's upsetting. That's upsetting. Out of the way on XFM 104.9. You're listening to the Ricky Gervais show with Steve Merchant. And well, we got, we've got to try and get on though. Got got not enough, no, not enough time. Let's, let's let's bang on. Let's do some observations, some <laughs> yeah. satirical. Take a sideways look at the week's news. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Who's the uh, fattest person you know, Carl? Is yeah. it an issue for you? Are you are you concerned about fat people? Only if I'm travelling somewhere and there's one. Sat next to you. That'd yeah. Be a bit annoying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think Ricky pointed out a few months ago when I when I went away, we were talking about plane journeys, and you were saying how it's a bit out of order. And when you go on holiday, right, you take your suitcase with you. Mm -hmm. I'm a. This is all Was right. I saying this on air though? Is this my question? Because there's there's a reason I don't say things. No, no, on no, air no. Sometimes. But I think you've got a good point. It made me think. <laughs> oh no, it's. I know what it was. Yeah. Yeah. Go on. It's sort of like if if you're not allowed to carry handbag on because you're a few pounds overweight, but there's a bloke behind you who weighs ten stone more than you. Yeah. Surely the whole package should be weighed. Yeah. Like you and your baggage. Absolutely. Can he, be should have, he should have a stone. carrier bag. And so that's... I can so I can take on uh, a Labrador and a wheelbarrow. <laughs> yeah. He can take on um, a towelette. Yeah. 
Yeah, to wipe absolutely. his brow. Yeah. His sweaty, okay. fatty brow. Yeah. yeah. No, I absolutely, I absolutely right. So, yeah. uh, and that does yeah. wind you up, do you, does it? But I don't. That's the only time. I mean, people can't help it. We don't want to like come across as if we're just having a go at people who've got. But they can help it. This is what we're saying. No, but no, that's, but that's a little bit. But I'm talking about obesity. I'm not talking about people who are overweight or have got a problem with with eating and so on. I'm talking about people who are obese because that seems to me to be an indulgence. I mean, no, I read no, no, some well, statistics. Well, 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 if we're getting serious, it, it is a problem, isn't it? Because it, it's an eating disorder. So what what what's what's terrible is is laziness and killing yourself. But the people who have, have genuinely got a problem. But it's a genuine concern for apparently or... for the future of our children. Apparently, it genuinely is. Yeah. Apparently, it costs. I was reading some statistic that it costs something like uh, America. It costs. Like 119 billion pound dollars a year, or something. But that's not what people are obesity. starving because fat people are eating all the food. I'm not saying people are starving because of fat people. Oh, you mean? I'm you mean, saying that it's a, no. I'm saying it's a concern. Oh, we we meant we'll soon have kids and they're hungry because next door they're all the food. No, I just <laughs> mean that, it, that apparently because exercise now people aren't taking up exercise, kids right. aren't taking up exercise. That we will all be obese in years to come. Not all obese, but yeah. it'll be a, a big obesity. Well, it's the natural state for the mammals. We crave fat. We literally fat, crave fat for for hard times. But now, but now there are no. Well, you're all saying offices. But, but our body haven't evo hasn't evolved yeah. to, to take our social uh, input in, yeah. so we still act like mammals, mm. and we we eat and we crave it, and we like to store fat. Yeah. That's why we have to go jogging because we don't we don't hunt, we don't do anything. So it, it it's not really their fault. You've got, it's, it, it, I mean, it is about willpower and, and sort of like you know self. <laughs> Hate but in years that, to come, we'll have just pictures like kids will just have pictures of they won't have N Sync on the wall. It'd be uh, like sumo wrestlers. Mm. Or, oh, um, oh, oh, you know sumo wrestlers. I saw this thing about sumo wrestlers. Um, because the, the, they they're athletes. They go into the, to this thing because it's a big honour to be a, a sumo. It's absolutely really? true, right? Yeah, absolutely true. Yeah. So you'd go along and you'd be nine stone, and you they they have doctors there, so you have to eat to get big. Right? right, and this doctor was interviewed. Jeremy's doctor is going. You know, it, it is against. You'd think it's against the Hippocratic Oath, <laughs> um, but um, whereas they do it anyway, I do it healthily. So he sells them. He gives them diets of like. Uh, you know, ten pounds of rice, wow. nine pounds of fish, and things like that. And they get but now because it's such an honour. It's almost a spiritual thing to be a great sumo and all that. Um, they have apprentices willing to. Now you know, like when you're an apprentice, say um, uh, runner or something, you have to make the coffee. You know, uh, or when you're working an apprentice in the studio, you have to clean the floor and stuff. Do you know what apprentice sumo's job is? An apprentice sumo. Gone. They wipe mm -hmm. the sumo wrestler's ass because they can't reach. They literally can't reach. Rubbish. Uh, right. Uh, can, what, we'll give Who's out the phone taking number. that up as a profession? I know. I imagine that. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd love to be a sumo wrestler. It's a great honour, and I'd love to work under you. Uh, sure. So, uh, sure. So, uh, what will I do? Start press ups first. There'll be uh, some press ups. Yeah. Okay. There yeah. Will be some get into the gym now. And uh, no, uh, I, don't before you rush go off. Go on. Go on. You I'm starving. Like, no, I can understand that. Go on. Do you, would you mind wiping my arms? Because right. I've just can't reach. No. Got. No. I can't get the arms back there. Can't okay. go down there. So, uh, and I'll, but, but I'll be honest with you. A lot of this Oriental food, it doesn't sit well with me. So it goes straight through me. To be honest, so it's quite messy. It's quite messy down there. It's right. quite runny. Okay. So okay. be careful. Okay. Um, you no, wear some gloves honor. if you want to wear gloves. Wear I gloves. I don't want to wear gloves. I don't want to wear gloves. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, not it's, a, it's an honest apprenticeship. It's two years, isn't it? You know, you're not going to take my feces and salad, are you? As souvenirs? Or no, 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 it is, no. I will be mainly getting fat myself. Sure. Wiping your ass. Yeah. Great honor. <laughs> yeah. No. Good. Well, Great no. honor. If someone could call in and verify that, look, Carl. Look at Carl looking at us like we've just said the worst thing. Yeah. Ever. You this is true, like apparently. Makes your eyes pop out and put in Forrest Gump in a wheelie bin. Don't look How at us like that. This is a. We're talking cultural science here yeah, and, yeah. and wiping asses. Yeah. So, play a record. Yeah, it's low brow <laughs> and it's high brow at the same time, Carl. Sure That's that an incredible point. picture. Oh, yeah, hey, uh, this is for all you people who who, uh, who like the odd cake. This is Bowie and Sweet Thing. Do you like that? Nice. Sweet thing, David Bowie. Beautiful, amazing. Off Diamond Dogs. Absolutely. We went to see him in the week, didn't we? We did indeed. Yeah, this little very exclusive tiny gig little that Jonathan gig. Hundred people. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely to see him. Yeah. Lovely to see him again. Lovely to see uh, see David again. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. No, he's looking good. He looks great, doesn't he? He was. Yeah. Was he bisexual? <laughs> sorry, I don't what, know why. Sorry, at the at the gig. No, 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 no. It's just a fact because I know he's married now, isn't he, with a kid and stuff. Yeah. But there was some, there was some sort of. Oh, I, I think, um, possibly, I don't know. I wouldn't want to. These pop stars, they dabble with anything, don't they? I suppose. <laughs>
<laughs> try anything once, don't they? These rock and roll stars. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So, uh, if anyone knows the, uh, the, the truth behind yeah, Sumo. Well, how does Sumo begin? Because that's why I can't, I've never understood how it began as a, as a, as a sport, because it's, do you know what I mean? Because you are, they are so huge. Well, so I reckon, it's not... I, I reckon it was a fat bloke who was picking on a little skinny bloke, and a skinny bloke <laughs> right. knew Kung Fu and Jitsu, goes, right, let's fight, and the fat bloke, no punching. Yeah, And what yeah. do you mean? He went, it's just leaning against each other. Yeah, And they went, yeah. well, you're bound to win. <laughs> and they went, right, well, I've won. And he went, yeah. bloke, okay. Yeah. And that's how it started, and the, yeah. the fat bloke He grabbed went, him, are you, are you wearing a nappy? Well, I am pretty I'm, big, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm having problems now. I can't I, wipe my I ass. can't wear a tuxedo. <laughs> yeah. I just can't. <laughs> exactly. I just, you know, that's the next yeah. step for John who's been banned wearing a thong in public. <laughs> so... But seriously, if anyone knows how Sumo began, I'm genuinely interested, email maybe, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Uh, just, as I, I, you know, Carl, what are your thoughts? Where do you think, uh, where do you think it began? Because it's an, don't you think it's an odd sport? I mean, it is a weird... They've always got nice hair. He seems to care about the hair a bit. Oh, sure. So he's sort of nicely pinned back. Yeah. Are you yeah. ever asked to, when, when people are doing like, you know, uh, um, Sharma's Britain or, you know, people are doing like big <laughs> historical <laughs> things. They, they say, well, well, we'll ask Carl about this. He might, yeah. he might have an opinion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They've got I'd nice like to hair. see you as a pundit, definitely, uh, on those kind of, on news night. It's yeah. just that he, I think it's a funny one because the whole idea of sport is to keep fit. Yeah. Mm. And that sort of. <laughs> You know, it's a yeah. bit of an odd one, isn't it? Mm. Mm. Well, it's, it's the same as sort of like weightlifting. You have to go through all that all year to see if you can push up, mm. you know, something heavier than someone else. But you have to walk round in a golf buggy to, yeah. to you know, to that one yeah, yeah. and take steroids and... Well, I mean, look, I mean, the other day, you know, I, I don't do much sport. I think living in London, there's not that many areas you can go and... Uh, Actually, I'm probably wrong there. Well, there's all the gyms and yeah. sports clubs I'm, I'm and stuff probably wrong and the on parks that bit. and the but, roads. But, but yeah. look how like, excited I was going around to your place, Ricky, and yeah. you had a, like a little garden. Yeah. I haven't got a garden. We played it football, was, didn't we? And we had a little- well, I did. No, you were rubbish. I beat you in penalties, um, 5-2, and then I beat you on, uh, uh knockout, I think, 10-4, no, no, no. and he always makes an excuse, he goes, no, start again, we didn't say that, he, or, I'm cracking up. So, have you seen Ricky play football? No, I've not really seen either right, play football. Right, it's not football. Y you sort of do it like, um, <laughs> it's like when you get a cat and you chuck it some wool, you sort of jump on it and lie on top of it so you can't get it, and then sort of kick it with his feet, lying on the floor. <laughs> Really? No, what I mean is, he fouled me, and I still, I was on one Are hand- Are you sure up. he didn't just collapse? Yeah, because of all the stress <laughs> of the exercise. That's the other thing, that's he the other thing. He just tumbled off the floor, <laughs> still and poured out of his way. <laughs> <laughs> I was too strong for him. No, no. I was too strong for you. Yeah, but you didn't last long, did you? It was like, if, if football matches- I didn't matches, want to last if football long. Matches went they, just, they just bring me on for the first <laughs> ten minutes. Who suggested you two play football? Did you suggest this, Rick? Yeah, we went around there, yeah, football, yeah. We had to go to football in the garden, yeah. Yeah. What else do we do? Uh, I'll, I'll look, uh, just had a look at your salamander. <laughs> right, is that you from Ismore? Because <laughs> I know that when I first went to your house, I, you did, you used to show your genitals to people a lot more than you do now. Oh, you um, definitely used to do that, you used to think that was hilarious. Yeah. I don't know what it is that you get to a certain age, men of a certain ilk yeah, get to a certain Jonathan age and just don't, yeah. Out, didn't he? yeah. Yeah, when Ross came in he did the same. Yeah. It's that weird... Yeah, I suppose, I thought, oh, you've seen it now, I thought you've seen it, you know, yeah. you weren't, you weren't impressed the first time <laughs> to be quite honest with you. So, uh, yeah. 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 Um, no, it's, you know, it's but, you know, always, nice. always, a, always a treat to see Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. what do you make of Ricky's place? What do you, what do you make of it? Again, that's not a euphemism. It <laughs> yeah. doesn't mean that I've got, it's like a flat fish. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, do you, uh, you want to see my place? <laughs> yeah. There it yeah. is. <laughs> it's, it's all right. I mean, I've, I've. You've seen better. I've, the, the pictures you've got on the wall of, of, uh, I'm not. I'm not keen on the same sort of art as you are. Right. What, what sort of art? Because, um, yours is quite sort of modern art. Uh... It's got this big, like, bit of, uh... Abstract. ...canvas with, like, l just, just loads of dark colours on it. Yeah. It looks really miserable. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, it, it sort of brings the place down. <laughs> If, if you're gonna sell it, that woman on Channel 5, the house doctor, if she came around, she'd say, take that down, <laughs> and we'll get double for it. It's just, oh. it's, it's, it, I oh. thought it was, um, like a, a wall he was Take testing. that down, get that salamander out, and just pop those back in your trousers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, he didn't know what sort of colour to use on the wall, so he's, he's like, been putting a little bit on, now. that's not good, I'll use like a bit of a darker colour, yeah. and it's just loads are of you, different- Are you, are you Brian Sewell? Cause you're just saying- So what kind of art do you like? I'm intrigued. Yeah. I, I like, uh- Athena. I like Lowry. <laughs> right. Larry, the worst painter in the world. 
the most no, overrated. No, no, no. You see, it depends. You're you're getting excited rubbish. about your your stuff you've got on. Lowry, but, right? Yeah. You can look at. He really is the Brian and Michael. No. Of the, well, um, but it's real, isn't it? Right? What do you mean it's real? It's real. You look at his picture and you see like little disabled people walking about. You see kids <laughs> That's not playing, real, then. playing with like footballs. You've got your, your your dad coming home from work, working in the factory. Got yeah. a little dog barking. It's it's life, <laughs> right? And you can look at it like ten minutes. Go away. Go and watch telly or something for a bit. Yeah. Go back to it and you'll see different things in it. Well, yeah, really? What is it like one of those magic sure, eyes? You sure that's not a telly? Yeah, you've you been sure looking out the window, Carl. You sure you weren't watching When the Boat Comes In? People will agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than your stuff that you buy. <laughs> <laughs> this show started off slick. Yeah. We had something to say. No, I we, um, What we, are you we, talking we, about? We're now discussing we art. Were, we were taking the pick out of, of, of fat people, and mm. now it's And now you've taken it all highbrow, Carl. Play a record, we come back to fatties. <laughs> Badly drawn boy. Something to talk about on XFM 104.9. You're listening to Ricky Gervais. Well, then, uh, Steve McGregor. Well, let's well. just get on with a. The we've already had a complaint. Yeah. Someone yeah. saying, Your TV show's so good. Why is your radio show so hard work, you useless fat? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. You, can't, you can't please everyone, Carl. It's like Lowry. Some people like Lowry. Some people like that fella who did the dark painting for me. Talking of uh, emails, there was a, some guy. I don't. He hasn't mentioned Larry's his name, rubbish. or maybe his name's Steve. But he said that he was checking out the uh, the Office DVDs. DVDs going on sale, isn't it soon? I think the video <laughs> and the DVD of the Office are going on sale soon. But he was checking out on Amazon, and he said that uh, <laughs> it says on there, and I did check it, double check it, that uh, it includes uh, some special some special frottage. On or special frottage? Oh, frottage. Correctly is pronounced. That, is that mutual? Doing it to each I other, think it's, or, it's is it the, or is it the rubbing up against each other? Yeah, it's one of those. It's isn't it? Yeah, it's some that, sort of, it is. It's where you rub up against. I people. don't know. It's something like that. Yeah. But, so there's some special frottage on there. Yeah. <laughs> <that forward laughs> I think they the mean. Movie. I think they mean footage. I'm imagining. Um, uh, if you're buying it for frottage, you are going <laughs> to yeah, be you're disappointed. Be disappointed. Yeah. yeah. Um, but um, <laughs> the, 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 we're going to that first hour then was about eating too much, wasn't it? And I think we can. That's essentially that, what we talked about. Yeah. That's probably. Right. Do you, you know? Um, I, I read something interesting. You know, they've banned. I used to get the Guinness Book of Records every year from about the age of ten onwards, and uh, <laughs> it, I went straight went to the section like you know the biggest, fattest, all that. Right? And there used to be gluttony records, and it was like these ridiculously looking Texans, and how many hamburgers they can eat, and of course they were. It's just so dangerous. They've they've put it down to how many hamburgers you can be eat in a minute now. Yeah, and so they've brought it down to things like seventeen. Yeah, you know, they still yeah. burst their stomach glass for. But um, uh, I, I remember I was um, I was watching the Big Brother when they had to break that record. You know, like eating sweet corn and balancing. I was thinking, who wants to beat that record? Yeah, the, most of the records in the Guinness Book exist because no one wants to contest them. There's one in there, um, a bloke there, had his picture taken with a milk bottle on his head, <laughs> and it's the record for having a milk bottle on his head. Yeah, and it's like four days. I want to go. <laughs> no one wants to beat that record. Mm. And there was one in there. This is amazing. This is absolutely true. Right, L last year's Guinness Book Records. It says. Um, uh, in in Thailand in 1988, uh, uh, some sort of um, uh, temple or ceremony, these uh, incense burners fell over, and I think crushed people or burned people to death. Seven people died, and it's under the heading "Worst Jostic Disaster Ever." <laughs> <laughs> Do you reckon oh. they're going to try and beat that one? Oh God! There's a there's a guy up north, right? Who's um, <laughs> he's in the Guinness Book of Records <laughs> for being able to put a do you know a car a little mini. Up his no, ass. On his head, right? And you think, oh, that's good. But without the engine in. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that he puts this thing that steals weight and weighs like, you know, 50 stones on his head, and you're going, boo! Yeah. What do you mean he puts the mini on his head? He, um, he wears a little cap with a little bit of sponge on. <laughs> <laughs> they all do up there. And they've, uh, and he picks up this mini. Okay, yeah, go on. And it takes like two blokes to put it on his head, and then he walks around for about ten seconds showing off. But he doesn't have the engine in it, so I mean, if you're gonna do it... Yeah, go the whole hog is yeah. what I'm saying. See, what I think, the reason I think he didn't do it with the engine in is because he couldn't, Carl. We'll, yeah. we'll pick, do a motorbike or something. My mate went to see that, what's that circus that came to London? 
and that was in uh, the Camden, and it's sort of like really weird sort of gothic thing. Oh right, yes, I remember. And uh, there's a, 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 he said at one point this nude woman got into a, a jar. He went, but it was a big jar. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. said it was a jar big enough for a woman. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. Big one to go boom. <laughs> yeah. But you know, get into a jam jar, <laughs> exactly. and you know, I'll be applauded. But <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. a big jar. That's a jar shaped like I, you. I will get into a wardrobe. <laughs> what that big ward? Yeah, well, I can get into that. No, you. I will get into the well, wardrobe. I remember I told you about this before, Rick. I was devastated a couple of years, I think it was a couple of years ago, when I read about that guy that won the world record for staying underground the longest. Right? Oh, what yeah. happened, right? He, he got in this box and uh, he was buried like ten feet underground. It was in a pub car park in Mansfield. Yeah, and the only way he could Nottingham. communicate, the only way he could communicate was through this tube that they had that went up to the surface and he could talk to people and I assume that was how he got oxygen. And, um, and it said that while he was down there, Right. He began and ended a relationship with yeah. a woman. She, right? she was a passerby, she chatted to him, da, da, da. they started this relationship and they ended it, right? Now, my point was, right, obviously, you know, my luck with the ladies is not, not triumphant. And, you know, I haven't got a girlfriend or whatever. You're and not when, Don Juan. Well, yeah, exactly right. And what I'm saying is, when you read that there is a man ten feet underground pulling women through a tube. Yeah. You've got to sit yourself down and ask yourself some very serious questions. Yeah. I yeah. was a little bit, as you can imagine, a little bit upset. From the Midlands. Exactly. Yeah. A little bit devastated. Oh dear. Really upset me. Do you, do you still, what is your method now of chat? Do you still throw little rocks at them and go, over here? <laughs> yeah. I, um, there was a kid I remember at our school, Mark Johnson, when we were like 10 or something. And we were talking about Guinness Book of Records, and Mark Johnson went, Yeah, yeah I'm in the Guinness Book of Records. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I'm intrigued. You're a ten year old. <laughs> I said, Go on. He went, Now, I don't, does this qualify? Does this qualify? He claimed that he was in America once, and he went to see, um, a baseball game. And the, supposedly that game was the world record for the number of people in an audience for a baseball game. It was like some massive stadium. I, I, I and this was the I, most people I'll ever, tell you apparently. Account, I and he claims he was there. I don't reckon it was listed. Well. I don't reckon Mark Johnson got his name <laughs> no, on that list. Exactly. Uh, and exactly. Ross McWhirt would be going, well that's the whole book. But I think I remember him all. looking it up and going, there it is, I was there. Yeah. Yeah, Does no. that count? I mean, no, I don't. Well, I've done a similar thing. There was an ice hockey game in Manchester. Sure. And they filled it. It was the, uh, the arena. Yeah. They had an ice hockey game. Uh, and I was part of it, but I wouldn't go around bragging. No. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? No, now you've no. brought it up, I'm telling you. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you're not gonna boast about it. Nah. You're what's not gonna the, get a t-shirt made. What's the best thing you've ever done? I don't what? know. I said... Come on. What's the best thing you've ever done that we will go, did you really do that, Carl? You see, it's weird, cos I've been thinking about this quite a bit, cos, uh, I'm 30 on Monday. Are you? Are you really? Yeah. Oh, you're just gonna try and get presents, aren't you, from the listener? No. Nah. But- I but, say listener. <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> but, um, I kinda was thinking, have I had a good 30 years? <laughs> what do you I? think? I don't know. Carl, is this gonna get a bit melancholy now? Yeah. Cos we've been having a few laughs at the expense of fat people. I'm not sure you wanna- we want you to bring it down now. No. We've been, like, we've, we've been having a jolly laugh about people who are morbidly obese. It's yeah. always when my girlfriend's working away, I always think about odd things. Do you? Odd times. Doesn't she leave you shiny things or videos in so you don't get- you don't get too depressed and you can- Well, well, la last night when I sent you that text. That was- Right! Oh, right, let's play a record. This sounds right. intriguing because oh, I'm right, worried it is Carl's intriguing. It's incredible. Right, play a record. Right, w wait for this text that Carl sent me. Right. Just say straight away, Rick, before you carry on, um, we've had some people emailing in um, about the origins of sumo wrestling. Yeah. But they've sort of cut and pasted a huge ream of information from the web. Thanks very much, but we need bullet points or not, <laughs> not, don't bother. You're wasting our time, frankly, with any kind, any, too uh, many sentences, uh, proper grammar. We're talking about Ricky Gervais here. Yeah. So not just, that I'd read the bullet points either, you'd read them too. Exactly, me. but exactly. So but your, your concentration would lapse so quickly <laughs> that it just yeah. needs to be key words, you know, arse, sumo, <laughs> yeah, yeah. things like that. Yes, arse wipe. <laughs> yes, I arse need, wipe sumo correct. Yeah, or maybe even a picture of someone wiping an arse with a tip <laughs> next exactly. to it. If you could get yeah. words if out. You could, if you could, maybe if you could send through the orange 
origins of sumo wrestling in sort of diagram or sketch form, <laughs> yeah. or in a kind of comic book, or one of those flick books. <laughs> that just, you just maybe draw a quick flick book, send that in. <laughs> but thank you very much. But thank you for thinking that, of that, Um, I woke up this morning, yeah. Feeling fine. It's not a blues song, and, uh, I turned my phone on, and it, it was from Carl, and it went, forget it, I've made my mind up. And I thought, wow. What is that? And I forget it. I've made my. Yeah, mind. I went, Carl. What is it? He went. Oh no, it's about the text I sent you last night. I went. Well, what, what was it? I just got this text. He went. Ah. Oh. oh, I was just wondering. I was, I was thinking last night. He said, "Supposing you had to have your hands removed." Sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> 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 and the doctor said, "Well, you can either have them stay like that with stumps." Or I can sew feet there. <laughs> what would you have? And I was bleary eyed and I went, the stumps? He went, yeah. <laughs> I went, all right? He went, yeah. And then and what that, was his follow up text to that? And then I got the text, it was obviously before it, and it went, and it was like quite serious. What, what would you do if so he's not doing hands? Would you have stumps or the feet? Right? Now, the way, uh, when I said he's made his mind up and I went, the stumps, he went, yeah. I think secretly he decided on the feet, <laughs> but was too embarrassed to tell me. There's a little, little bit of what would you do? Because it's, it, But why night, did you think of this? Why did you think of this? Girlfriend's this away, right? Yeah, no, that's not why you start thinking bizarre I'll, surgery I'll devices. Now, right? I'll let you into my little mind, right? Last night, <laughs> I, um, I had some beans on toast, right? <laughs> She was away. It's good already. Right. She was away, she had some beans on toast. She went wild. Yeah. Right? Now, I was stood up. I live on like a, on a high street, right? So I'm, I'm washing up, I'm looking out the window. First thing that had me attention is, I can, I can look into other people's flats, right? Yeah. <laughs> and it was weird how all these different lives were going on. I was watching them. And everybody had the telly on and was watching Volcano, right? Which was on last night. Right. right. And I thought, oh, that, that's weird, right? I can see him all watching it. And it was like a little Chinese lad who was dancing around in some underpants. <laughs> and then there's a little old woman who lives downstairs who was reading a book. And she's always reading a book every night. And it's like, I have a better life than her. And then there's, a, there's like some sort of bouncer who's always getting ready to go out late at night yeah. with all the black on. He looks like a bouncer. So I was watching all this life yeah. going on. I thought, did you witness a murder while you were doing this? <laughs> yeah. It was like, it was like that sort of sliver film where that bloke had loads of tellies watching yeah, people's sure. lives. So that was going on in my mind. And then I was washing up and I picked up the plate and I thought, oh, it's amazing, isn't it? The, the human body, the way you can just sort of, you know, I want to pick that up and you do. Yes. And the way your hands work, right? Yeah. You've got five little digits, but it's, it's just the right amount to do what, <laughs> yeah. to do what you've got to do, right? <laughs> So, <laughs> so I'm, I'm washing, I'm cleaning the plate. <laughs> Sorry, Carl, stop. It's just the right amount. Might be one of the most genius things I've ever heard said. I would love David Attenborough to phone you up and say, Carl, how do I word this about the evolution of the mammalian front uh, limb? Just go, I'll just say it's the right amount. Isn't it? <laughs> but it is. It one, is. One of extra would is. get in the way. Yeah. And one less would just make it a little bit more tricky when picking up a, a bit of a slippery dish. Sure. Or, buy, <laughs> or buying gloves. <laughs> yeah. A slippery dish. So then, I, I was thinking, oh. uh, imagine like going to the doctors and they're saying, yeah, everything's alright, your art's good and everything, but... <laughs> your art's good? What, your Larry's or...? Yeah, yeah. your heart, your heart, yeah. you're, you're in good form and what sure. have you. It's good news, you know, I had Giano in earlier, he's not looking good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, I had uh, Waller. But yeah. you're, you're alright, but <laughs> your hands uh, need to come off. Right. <laughs> But, That's bad. Like, I'd get a second opinion initially. <laughs> oh, God! But a bit of good news, I've got a nice pair of feet I can sure. sort you out with. Yeah. And he puts them on, and then I was thinking, right, first of all, <laughs> washing up, what would that be like? <laughs> but, Steve! I, <laughs> that'd be tricky. Yeah. And then the second thing was, it'd probably ruin the, the, sort of the shape of your jumper. Because <laughs> you have to keep putting the feet with it. Yeah. And then I thought, but I could still cycle in. Okay. To work. <laughs> you could run in. Well, that's the thing. You'd be, was, like, you'd be really yeah, fast. Well, for... that's what I was thinking. I thought I could still cycle because I could balance. And then I thought, but the only thing is I probably couldn't pull the brakes. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> because of the little short things. Yeah, yeah. And then, like you, I thought, but then again, you'd run in in half the time. So that's what was going on in last night.
<laughs> right. That's what I was thinking about. Sure. Did you, did you how ever... How long did this take? <laughs> well, how long has it take to wash up? Right. Because <laughs> I imagine you just being there for, like, all night. <laughs> Probably 25 minutes. How long did the little Chinese fella dance for in his pants? He, he's always doing it. Last night he was at it for, like, 10 minutes. Just, yeah. And his girlfriend never sits in the same room as him. She's always sat in the bedroom. <laughs> She's going, you, you dance in pants again, I go in next yeah. door. Well, she was in the bedroom. She's always in the bedroom, sat on the floor, on the mobile phone. Right. All the time, yeah, it's weird how people's lives are just like, it is like that Groundhog Day thing. It's like, you know, he's jumping about in his underpants. The old woman's sat there reading a book. Yeah. And that's what got me thinking about my life. Do you think she ever goes- Are you sure she's not dead? <laughs> <laughs> Every time you look down there, she's just flicking through it. She's just reading this book. The pages never turn. <laughs> she never seems to finish it. Oh, she never moves you, from her chair. Are you, jo- are you sure the Chinese her girl's going- Her cats are dead around I, her. I, I, I'm going into next door again. That little yeah. round headed fella's smell. looking in. He's looking in at me. The bouncer goes, don't worry, love. I'll go and beat that's, him up. But he's true. always getting ready. That's true. That they, see, they see you staring at and washing up going, I could have feet. Here and they get yeah. scared. The old woman's dead. Oh, Carl, dear. can you tell us roughly which neighbourhood you live in, so so it's, that we know? It's central. Central, is it? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Imagine if that little d- was he a Chinese fellow? Do you say? Yeah. Imagine if he was listening now. I'd love him to call in and explain these actions. Well, he, he might be on some other radio station talking about a lad who's always washing up and <laughs> yeah. looking at his hands in a mysterious way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but do we have this doctor? This doctor that would go, well, all right, Carl, I've got, you can either leave him as stumps or I've got a little pair of feet. Why, uh, I mean, I t- told Jane this and Jane went, D- is that the only choice? Is he, could say, could I have some dead man's hands? <laughs> have you got any, have, if you, where do you get the feet from? Where do you get the feet from? Can I have, can I have, what would you rather have then? Human feet or monkey paws? Well, I mean, that wasn't an option last night. That if the doctors no. said. No, it wasn't is... an option last night, but don't forget, it's in your head, Carl. <laughs> this didn't happen. No, this but is... I'm just saying at the time, that's all the doctor had to offer. But you know, it's your head, you can go anywhere. No, 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 it wasn't a real doctor to offer. It's in your head, you can go anywhere. <sighs> You're not trapped. Yeah, but if you can do anything, then you'd say, we'll sort us out some other hands. <laughs> Fair point, the clear <laughs> record. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we gotta come back to this. Someday, XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais. Lads, can I just stop you there straight away? Because the record finished before we'd finished chatting about what we're going to do next. We're going to do Carl's stupid competition again. We're just trying to get the. I think think that you. What are the rules? Right, I think. Because last week it was a shambles week. I know, it was too easy. That's the week before I should I think think people should phone up now and be having the queue, and then he should have the clue. Otherwise, because people are just phone up with when they know the answer or not. But how is that entertaining to the listener? It's <laughs> not, That's what I'm gonna I throw think, back at you straight away. I don't think this is entertaining at all. I just think people might want to talk to Carl for us just right. a split second. The way we'll do it, right? Yeah. Right? This is me role here, right? This is- this is the way we're gonna do it. Right. We're gonna say, if you want to win, The Office on VHS, right? Yeah. You can call don't it Don't say now. it like that. Like well, it's a rubbish it like, prize. There is some- if you get the DVD, there's some special frottage. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, okay. it's impressive. Right, so they call up now on 08, 08, 700, 800, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? Yeah. We, like, bung on a bit of Elton John in a bit, right? Mm. We line up two callers. Look forward to that, it's a beautiful track. Yeah, we line up two callers. Yeah. Right, and then we have them on the air and we say, right, I'm gonna tell you the little story, you've gotta tell me what song it is. And they're playing against each other. Well, right. can they be? Can they be up at the same time then, so I can speak yeah. at the same yeah, time? Yeah, of course, yeah. But how can they play against each other? Because they haven't got buzzers. It's or the first one. They'll, they can say the name. They can shout the name. And they, and it's organised. And they got as many goes as they want. No, I think they, they should have one go at a time, and then the other person can have a go, and then they can have another go. Yeah, it's like dueling. It's and, like dueling. And if they don't win, no one wins this week. We're not giving away prizes willy nilly. Sure. You know, we can give one away next week again. Because you know, like, the office away... is not costing us anything. Because we were, like, involved. Know, we can get as many I, copies as you want of it. I like Seriously. it. Seriously. I like it when, like. We got them coming out of our. Do you, do, do, do you think the listeners are usually in on sort of board meetings like this? <laughs> or do you, you know, oh, I usually... said this before, guys. I said before. <laughs> like we should do this off air, but you, you refused imagine, to try. Imagine Chris Town going, hold on, what? They, they can. They can. What are they doing? They do? can phone they, a friend. They, they can, yeah, they just phone a friend. Look, come down to. Right, okay, look, we haven't got this. We haven't right, got this right, sorted. Phone up now. Phone up. We'll have to, We'll play some adverts. Phone yeah. up now. Yeah. Right, so so that's the plan then. Okay, right. we're gonna have a beautiful track here. Continuing our wait, whoa, 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 Steve, 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 Steve. Go on. Right, I've said your name five times now. I don't need to mention it at all next week. Right, um, we're gonna play uh, Out and John. Continuing our sort of thing of don't don't diss them just because they're old and 
bald now. Yeah. They used to be good. This is a beautiful track. I dissed him, didn't I? Yeah. Um, called Tiny Dance. So we go, enjoy that. Yeah. Enjoy that. Enjoy listener. that. And if, then, if not now, the Steve, what were you gonna say? <laughs> Thanks for asking. I was just gonna say, <laughs> what should the audience be doing now? If they're listening at home, they wanna play the game, what should they be doing, Carl? Should they be phoning say you Say the there? phone number they, again. They should be ringing 0800 800 1234. 0800 800 1234. And two lucky contestants get to play um, your game. Yeah, what's the song? What's the song that Carl's thinking? Could I give you a clue when you call up? You've got more chance of playing if you don't sound like a mentalist. <laughs> exactly. Most of the people that phone sound a bit like Carl. We're not interested. We don't want those no. sort of people. Yeah. We want people who can, you know, who are maybe eloquent. Why are you watch me in my pants? <laughs> <laughs> Out on John, Tiny Dancer. What Beautiful. a great track. Oh, that is. Magnificent. Well, we've got. <laughs> di uh, well, despite Carl's actions, you should have seen Carl. It was like squiddly diddly. <laughs> His arms and legs there, he'd have been better with feet, I'll tell you. <laughs> he didn't know what he was doing. We were getting angry. At one point, he went, Oh, we get a man and a woman. And the uh, <laughs> bloke phones up. He goes, Are you a bloke? The bloke goes, Yeah, he goes, Hold on. And then another the bloke goes, He goes, Oh, you're a bloke. Oh, we wanted a woman. <laughs> and the bloke said, oh, he goes, he goes, put the woman on. She came on, he went, are you the woman? <laughs> it's the way he speaks oh, he's to people. So, who have we got on the line? Here's the woman. <laughs> <laughs> it's the woman. Hello. Hello. Hi, what's your name? Sarah. Sarah, okay, right, Steve, you, you, you want to be rooting for this? Well, I think we should, it seems to me because you may need some help because obviously Carl's mind is, uh, is a, a viper's nest. Yeah. It's a jungle in there. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if you want to call anyone at any point, maybe you've got some questions you want to just consult or can if, confer, then I'll be I on your side. Be. You're like, you're, she's like, you're like her phone a friend. Exactly, I'm the phone a friend, I'm and the, uh, ask the audience. Who's and the bloke? Here's the bloke. It's Owen. Owen, okay, I'll, I'll be um, helping you out. Should you need any help or clues as to, you know as insight into Carl's mind, I must tell you though, we don't know what Carl's going to come out with now either. No, we keep it we keep it real like this. I Go should on. just say for people who've not heard the show before, um, this is where Carl now will tell us a cryptic story. And basically, hidden within that will be a clue to the title of a song. I say cryptic. It's it's gobbledygook. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> nonsense. So okay then, um, just to find out um, uh, who who goes first, my lad or or your girl. Um, I'm going to um, uh, uh, toss a coin in my head. Okay. So who, who can guess? Well, first? ladies first. Ladies first. Okay, what was your so name again? Sorry, Sarah. 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 So Sarah. Sarah. Okay. So, Sarah. Uh, heads or tails? Heads or tails. Tails. No. Right, my lad will go first. Okay, okay so, right. so what this means is, when he's finished the, uh, the cryptic clue, you, Owen, will get to guess first, but if you get it wrong, it goes over to Sarah and then back and forth until one, hopefully one of you gets it right. Okay. okay. Uh, we could be here for some time. Yeah. Right. And what, what, what are we playing for here? A DVD or video of The Office? Whatever we can Whatever find you've got, yeah. whatever format you've got. Yeah. Okay yeah. then. Brilliant. Okay, Carl, go. Right, so here we go. So then, it's right? the name of a song we're looking for, brilliant. Right, this bloke, he's had a, uh, He's had a good night out at the yeah. pub. Right. This is probably all irrelevant. Mm -hmm. um, Remember that, Owen. This could all be irrelevant. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. Right. So he's had a good night out with his mates and that, and uh, he's really enjoyed himself. And he's on on his way home, and it's just like any any ordinary night, right? Everything's just normal. He's seen the same people leaving leaving the pub, going home, and he's like, "See you, you know, see you tomorrow night. I'll, I'll be out tomorrow, seven thirty, and what have you." <laughs> and and they're on the way home, and uh, it's a nice night. Everything's everything's nice, and he's walking home, and he sees this sort of sort of smoke coming out of a grid, right? Some smoke coming out of a grid. Yeah, a bit a bit of like smoke. And he thinks, what's that? Right? And this is what's weird because it's like any other normal night, but this time the smoke coming out of the grid, and he goes over to it, and he can hear some moaning. Right? It's like ooh. So he he thinks this isn't right. So he stands over the grid, and he's and he's looking down, and he can't see anything. So he lifts the grid up, right? Do you mean a grill? No, a grid. A you grid. You know, like a grid in the street. What, yeah, he not needs really. a grill. A grill. Okay. 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 And he lifts it off, and he's looking in, and like more smoke's coming out, and he can hear the moaning getting louder, and then this little demon pops his head out. Oh, right. Bloody and, demons. And he goes, "Are you all right?" Yeah. And the little demon goes, "Oh, I'm hurting." And he goes, what do you mean you're hurting? He said, oh, it's dead hot down there, you know. And, and it's weird, because he works it out that it's, like, come from hell. Right? Yes. And it, he's going, oh, I'm all hot and burning, and all his skin sort of really red raw because of all the flames in hell and stuff. So he goes, oh, 
he said, uh, I tell you what, I'll, I'll take you to the doctors. And the, and the little demon's like, what, you, you'll do that for me? And he goes, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. And he takes him to the doctors. What's the song? That was, uh, Ricky Gervais, next <laughs> FM, it's three o'clock now, we're going over to <laughs> Natasha. <laughs> Thanks very much, see you next week. Bye. Man, a long, that, was, that was quite a long story. Ooh. Is Owen and Sarah still there? Yeah. Have you dozed off? <laughs> You're still with us. Okay, Owen. Any clues? No, not yet. I, I haven't got a clue. I haven't got a clue. I've, I, I have <laughs> no idea. Can I think out loud with Owen, do you think? No, I think him? Owen needs to at least okay. have a guess before Go on, have a can. guess, Owen. Uh, smoke on the water. No. Well, it's not, is it? So, it's not be that. okay. Sarah, what do you think? <laughs> Back out of hell. Mm. It's a good guess. No, not. It's not right. Not right. <laughs> right, Carl, you'd have to give him a little clue. Um. Well, think about the little fella. Think about the little demon. Yeah. Okay. There's the clue. Brilliant. Thanks for that. Where did I say you came from? Highway to hell. Mm, on the right, along the right lines, but not the right song. Back Sarah. To Sarah. <laughs> Stay away to heaven. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Carl, if this is rubbish, I'm never working with you again. <laughs> If this doesn't work, what do you mean? If this is right. rubbish, <laughs> <laughs> right? Th right. Okay. Take it. Take the main bit of the story. What's happening? We don't know what What's the main, the main bit is? of the story. It took thirty minutes. The grid. There's the grid. We got the grid. Grid. The yeah. smoke. What's it's he got... done? How did the story end? He went, went to the doctor. He went to the doctor. That's right, he, went to the doctor. he went to the doctor. Who did he take to the doctor? He went to the, the little demon, demon fella. Why did he do that, Sarah? Was, come on. That's a big clue. Right, why did- Sarah, come on, let's think about this. Why would he take a little burnt demon to- Was he burnt? He well, was burnt, wasn't he? He was- he's from hell. Yeah. All the flames yeah. and that, and all his skin hell. was really raw, and he's like- he was moaning in pain. And oh. the little fella goes, yeah, I am on the way home. My tea's gonna be in the oven and everything, but do you know what? I'm gonna take you to the doctors and sort you out. Sick. Doctors. Doctors. Oh, God. Is there man. anyone you've got there in the house who could maybe help you? <laughs> like a sort of eight-year-old child? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. An alien. Yeah. <laughs> um. I've got a three-month-old baby. So. Oh. He probably talks more sense. Yeah. <laughs> Not than you. Than Carl, we mean. Um. Oh. Right. Right, I'll tell you what, let's play a record. But these let's poor, all have a chat. These poor people have got lives. Sure. They're, they've oh got yeah, like we haven't. No, but I know, the, the, Carl, this I is- I got- there's so many things I could be doing instead of this, Rick. I know, but Carl- Carl- We'll play some ads, right, and They come can't back. stay on the line They've got the... three minutes- they're, they're playing for a video, eh? Three, <laughs> they've got three minutes to think about it. Is that alright with you? Okay. Yeah, and is that alright, Owen? Yep. Sorted. <laughs> Right. Please try and guess this, because Carl's threatening to roll it over to next week. Oh. I know. I, d I don't want to live a week trying to think of a little burnt devil in a in a grid, as he calls it. <laughs> burnt right. devil in a grid. Devil, devil in a, it. Devil in a grid. Devil in by a grid. Excess. Smoky, smoky devil, devil. Oh God. Oh, um, burnt devil grid. Sarah, any grid? What's a grid? Any he means idea? a grid. He a means the little thing in the grill. in the uh, um. smoke. Burn. Smoke on the water. Bar smoke. Barbecue to doctor. Burnt doctor. Owen, oh, any. Any ideas? Uh, devil Without a Cause by Kid Rock. No. What are we gonna oh, do is, is, the, is the word devil right? Yeah. So devil's a key word here. And you're thinking about what the bloke's- what's the bloke done? He's took him to the doctor. Devil, isn't he? Why- why anything. did he do that? Why didn't he just say, oh yeah, it looks terrible, but I've got to get off home? He's, he's a good he's Samaritan. He's a good Samaritan. Right. He's a, he's a good guy. He's a- uh, He's a good guy. Saviour. Devil. Saviour. Devil for later. We're really running out I've of time. I've got it! I've got it! Have you really? Sarah, yeah. I tell you this, love, you are- you have got something to entertain yourself with in about three weeks' time when we get the, the DVDs and videos through. Cool. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I give you Sympathy for the Devil! Well done! <laughs> sympathy for the Devil! <laughs> oh, oh man rubbish, alive. Mate. It's, it's rubbish, that's not a cryptic <laughs> clue. It's not rubbish. Sympathy for the Devil. You said he wasn't the Devil, you said he was a demon. Right, yeah, but I one. No. Right, okay. Sympathy for. What, what's all that rubbish about him being burnt and taken to the hospital? Sorry, Rick, but I'm noting a little, uh, a little whiff yeah. of jealousy there. It's so rubbish. No, no I'm sorry, but Sarah cannot, is happy. It's not allowed to try and make people Her guess. baby is happy. Sarah. Her, her husband, or maybe partner, maybe they're Owen. not married, maybe they're living in sin. She, he's also happy. Yeah. They're happy. That household is happy. Owen's Owen, Owen, devastated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Owen, do you, what do you want on DVD or video? DVD, please. DVD. Mm -hmm. Sarah, okay. thank you very much indeed for playing. Cheers, Owen, Sarah. commiserations. Sorry, Owen. Yeah.
It's triumphant. Another You're triumph. You're so rubbish, Carl. Carl. You are so rubbish. There you got it right. Oh, dear. Rubbish. Well done, Steve. Jealous. Jealous. I love it. I thought it was a great one. It's On XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Absolutely, yeah, hello. That clang you heard there isn't Carl. No. Carl's away. It's Sturgis. Claire Sturgis is here. Yeah. Hey. You'll know her from the Claire Sturgis show, but so uh, we know her from our early days on XFM. Yeah. And, you know, we're, we're good friends. It's sort of like uh, old times, isn't it? And Carl has uh, had a little surprise birthday present. What's the story with this, Claire? Because I don't well, know. Well, I did, you know, I, I came in on Monday expecting to see his little smiley face, yeah. as usual, and uh, it's always not here. Um, yeah. What do you mean? So, but his girlfriend had surprised him and dragged him off to the Caribbean for a week. Wow. No, Canary, isn't it? Oh, Canary, I mean, I yeah. don't know. He, he likes the Caribbean, he likes the crabs. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I thought he was bored of the Caribbean, I thought he didn't enjoy it last time. No, he loved it, didn't he? No, I don't think he did enjoy no, the crabs. No, Ginizia he didn't like. Right. He's but been travelling, hasn't he? I know, yeah. He gets He, he didn't like Ginizia because there's flies the size of matchboxes. Of course. And, uh... <laughs> And, uh, midgets in the kitchen. No, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Midges or midgets? <laughs> <laughs> midgets, he said. Right. In it was kitchens. midgets. He wasn't saying anything bad, he said that there were lots of midgets in there. Lots of midgets in the and kitchen. And I thought it was, he'd, he'd gone away to some sort of, like, theme holiday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, <laughs> no, this is, uh, I think Grand Canaria, all the Canaries or whatever it's And called. how old is Carl? Well, like, 30. Is he 30? Is 30 last week, I think, yeah. Oh, so it was oh. actually a birthday present. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I just so, thought, but, yeah. but, but that's all right. So have you got a competition that you can uh, regale us with, Claire? Because uh, obviously Carl provides a lot on this show. Hold on. We could do what? White Van Claire. White Van Claire. <laughs> yeah. Have you, are you familiar with this? We ask no. you questions, uh, topical questions, just okay. getting your opinion really on the, uh, the week's news. Okay, yeah. Um, it's on the spot. If you look forward to that. But you know I'm a little bit, you know. A little bit simple? That's well, fine. Just a little bit, you know. What? What? I always sit on the fence. Don't oh, I? Well, don't you sit really on the fence. You see, the worst thing there was, she was saying I'm a little bit like, you know, uh, liberal or I was, I I decided, know, I was you went simple. <laughs> yeah. You well, assumed. I didn't, know, I didn't know. I thought I'm a little bit, what, coked up? I don't yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? It's Sturgis. Anything could be possible. <laughs> but, but the other thing is with Carl, we didn't know how good value Carl was until we asked him sort of intelligent well, questions. Well, enough. Yeah. Because he, he looks quite intelligent. What is it? I mean, so we might, you, we might I don't think we've probed you enough. We don't know what, you know, your views are on a lot of me enough, actually. We don't know what your views are, you know, that's what I'm saying. We yeah. don't know where you stand. I mean, don't sit on the fence. This is the, this is the new Claire Sturgis. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're yeah, gonna dynamic. Find a personality in there, Claire. Let's go back All to right. the old days. <laughs> How about a bit of the Smiths? That was beautiful, Rick. Go on. Oh, you've been practicing for seventy days. Lovely. Yeah. 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 Smiths. Cemetery Gates. It's a lovely tune, mm. lovely song. There's one bit that worries me about it. It's sort of like a, a like a teacher warning. He goes, you must contrive uh, prose and poems, and the words you use should be your own. Don't plagiarise or take on loan. It's sort of like what are you telling us now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, like yeah. a lot of people are going, thanks, Morris. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Actually, yeah, that's not mine. That's Wordsworth. Right, well, I'm going to write my own. Yeah, yeah. It's weird, isn't it? Queen is dead, though. One of the great. Great I album it's not my favourite album. I, I, it was voted best album. But of the all Smiths. Time, what I love about the Smiths, they just seem to get like the Smiths is that's, just a that's brilliant done, name. Yeah. Don't you think it just captures everything about yeah. them? You know. We've got a thing about bad. Bad, um, yeah. Well, I was watching, I was watching, uh, VH1 Classic Smooth <laughs> last night. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. I love it. Absolutely Shade. Joy. Shade always on. You yeah. can always <laughs> get a love bit of Shade. But, um, <laughs> Foreigner were on. Oh, yeah. Oh, and, uh, well, I don't know which, I can't remember which tune it was, but, uh, the album I noticed it came from, classy album title, Agent Provocateur. Oh. I saw, oh. it makes my skin crawl. But I also, from the I, album Agent Provocateur. I, I imagine a, there's a, a band called Agent Provocateur, um, and they're from Wigan. It's a, it's a girl singer, she's 35 yeah. in a tight dress. <laughs> and it's yeah. four blokes with ponytails. Yeah, exactly, yeah, 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 yeah. Doing covers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Here's what you may remember. They, they, then they play a wedding, they go, we're not doing a wedding again. There was people, there was, there was cake yeah. being trodden in, there was exactly. kids. Children yeah. were just sliding across the yeah. parquet floor, yeah. they weren't yeah. listening to the music. But we, yeah, well, we've got a gig at the marquee coming up soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, endless guest list, five quid in. <laughs> oh, oh, Argent, Argent Provoc Provocateur, if your band's Argent Provocateur, or oh, Agent yeah. Provocateur. Have you ever been in a band yeah. called Argent Provocateur? Yeah. But, uh, but that's got to be one of them, because it's not, I don't know what that title says, I don't imagine Foreigner. I've got that sense of of intrigue and well, one of my wait, one of the worst names. Right, okay, to <laughs> pal. Right, it's <laughs> the worst. It's, uh, uh, yeah, let's start worst album titles. Okay, I'll, I'll kick off with to pal. Bridge of Spies. <laughs> oh, Bridge of Spies. Is that the one that featured China in your hand? I assume so. I don't think I did too many. Um, Bridge okay. of Spies. Who did Bridge this of album? Spies. Who did this album? Um, Beggar on a Beach of Gold. <laughs> Beggar on a Beach of Gold. It's got 
the likes of Collins written all over it, but I know it's, it's not very Collins. very close. Mechanics. Mike of the Mechanics, yeah. of course. I don't know what that means. Good old Mike He's a beggar on the beach of gold. Just look around at this some yeah. money. <laughs> yeah, he's saying, mean? he's saying, don't be a tramp, there's, there's some money there, look, mate. I don't know what it means. I think he means that everyone else is rich, but he's still poor. Yeah. 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 I actually, I yeah. like it. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. a bit deep for me, Steve. <laughs> Maybe you just need a little asterisk at the corner and then a little explanation <laughs> at the bottom of the record cover. I'm thinking about this, I'm not quite sure what it means. Oh! <laughs> he's very nice poor emotionally. Um, Chumbawamba. Well, you know, what, what can I- Uneasy do? listening. Yes! <laughs> I bet it was, from the Chumbas. Uh, are they still cracking on, are they? Cause I they think they used so. to live in a squat. They've they? done about, um, 400 albums, them and the Levelers. Mm. Yeah. Who's the best? Chumba one brought the levelers. So, uh, good question. Thanks for asking that. Um, <laughs> yeah. What's the what's the telephone number, Claire? <laughs> it's a uh, oh eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three four. Or you can email Ricky Gervais at xfm uk. Worst album titles ever. It's like real radio. It's isn't just it? like Chris Moyles. It is, isn't it? Exactly. Oh. We've got the big fat guys on the telly. <laughs> yeah. <in here. laughs> You know, and and, uh, it's well. kind of cheeky sidekick. And my uh, comedy Dave, you're almost as funny as Moyles. Fingers <laughs> <laughs> crossed, one day. <laughs> right, so you've brought in a record, haven't you? What are you going to play? Well, What's no, this I one just about? Wanna, the, do you know what like a, a bootleg is, Ricky? Oh, what yeah. are you talking about? Oh, yeah, I've yeah. a lot of them up on white label. Yeah, yeah go yeah, on. Okay. Well, no, this is quite good. And the Ian Baker brought in the other day. Sure. It's uh, it's a bit of Dre, a bit of Snoop Dogg oh, yeah. mixed in with Crowded House. I thought you'd love it. Oh, right. Right. The juxtaposition there is exciting in itself. <laughs> That's true enough. Play it. The weather episode, uh, Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, Crowdhouse, I love that. Enjoyable. That yeah. works for me, see? Yeah, what is it? Enough. No, it was nice. Well, she started it. off all right. We'll give it, should we give it one more go? I think a round of applause for Claire. So yeah, no, that's, that's brilliant. No, that's excellent, that. I love that. Rick, the, yeah, the phone, oh, it's just gone. The <laughs> phone, no, I tell you, the phone board had lit up there, Dre. Really? There was a call a buzzing call. through on call A call one. came through. A call came through on line one, yeah. and Stu just missed it. Carl would never have missed oh. that. He knows how valuable they are. I'm sorry. Yeah. That was probably someone with an amusing album title. No, I did get one, Steve. I did get one. Do you want to hear it? Yeah, go on. Um, okay. Uh, this is from Al, who yeah. says that, what about this, H to H E, who am the only one? Sorry, H to, to H E, H E, who am the only one. I don't know what it means. No. Van de Graaff generator. Oh, well, no wonder. That's the thing that you, one of those things at the museum that you wind up and you touch and it makes your hair stand on end. Yeah. That's the scientific thing, isn't it? Sure. I've given up, Steve. Yeah, no, you know, I that didn't really make me laugh either. I'll be so. honest, I'm thinking that the whole kind of amusing album titles thing we should abandon. I, I, I thought that, I, as I, I thought said it. it to be honest with you, I thought it was easier than this. I mean, Chris Moyles makes it work, that kind of crazy comedy okay, uh, let's try radio it. magic. But obviously, it's, it, we, and I don't think our listeners are into that stuff. Uh, okay, I just yeah. don't think they can be bothered to get to the phone. I don't think a lot of them are able. I think a lot of them are, you know, do you remember still when, smacked up. Do you remember when we spent about three hours trying to get to the Chris, through to the Chris Moyles show? I vaguely, yeah. What was the what was? He was doing this um, competition, <laughs> and it was um, it was uh, titles, song titles with golf about golf. Like so, we go like drive the cars and yeah. that. And and I was very, I was getting so excited. I went to phone up and go, Duran ah, Duran, golfy, golfy, golf, golf. <laughs> <laughs> and, I just, yeah. and I just thought, and I, it might have been less than, oh god, yeah, it probably cost me about ages. 30 quid just yeah. to ruin Chris Miles' competition. Yeah. Uh, that was a long time ago. Yeah, those were the days. When we, like, we realised, you know, he was a great talent and one to watch. Yeah. Before we'd enjoyed his new TV show. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, anyway. Yeah. Um, that's not. No, that's cheap. It's, cheap. it's cheap. It's yeah. cheap. Anyway, um, what should we talk about now then? Because that was, that, that all went well. <laughs> No, I mean that's twenty minutes. That's twenty minutes done, Fantastic. and we've nailed we've nailed amusing album titles. We've, um, we've done that. That's fine. So oh, we, we need uh, a new I, gimmick now. I'll tell you what. Uh, it, you know, you know, <laughs> no, got no, you got no, no, wait, 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 wait. Uh, you know, you know when <laughs> you go comes. out, you take an umbrella. You leave the right? house. You got right, You go umbrella. Right, right. Yeah. And it's a really sunny day. <laughs> yeah. And then you come out and you go. Oh, I wish I'd bothered with that because yeah. it's in the way. But then, right? Imagine when you go out. Right, it's and raining, it, it's raining. No. No. You go out without an umbrella. <laughs> okay. And then it rains. <laughs> oh, what's, no. what's going on there? Oh, isn't no. that weird, isn't it? Uh, so we've all been there. So we've all been if there. you've got like funny, weird observations of things that happen like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Stuff like that about umbrellas or any kind of sort of <laughs> yeah. accessory or hats. Give the number out again, Claire. This is going to be brilliant. <laughs> this is going to be great. Take this one. Take this one. Seven hundred, eight hundred, one, two, three, four. Just comedy observations. Yeah, the stuff you thought of. Wacky stuff you thought of. Just tell us what stuff you come up with. Get the Sony people on the phone. This is dynamite. Swain, uh, 
positivity. Absolutely. They could always do a good chorus, couldn't they? They could indeed. Um, I, I think we could play Pink. Is it just, is that really way out? You, you're saying that it'd pink, be wrong? you can't yeah. play Pink. I like that new one. Yeah, but whether or not it's in the building. Up, so no, you not that one. Get the <laughs> <party started. laughs> do you know who that's written by? Do you know who that's I'm written by? I'm trying to call the nurse, but she's being a little bitch. This that is one. a little of the interest. You know, um, oh. let's get the party started. I'm coming up. Yeah, you know, that, you know who that's written by? Well, the way you say it sounds a bit like um, is it, <laughs> <laughs> is it Radiohead? Tom York, you're thinking no? No. <laughs> let's uh, get the party started. I'm coming, coming up. I'm coming up. I'm coming up. Careful, I'm coming up. Let's get the party started. I love it. One more case. Is it Johnny Rotten? Is Johnny Rotten? But this is the truth. It's written by that woman. With the goggles and the big hat that used to be in Four Non Blondes. <laughs> is it? It's written by her. Oh, you're not looking. You're not thinking of Snork, are you? No, 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 no. Splits. No, I oft, I oft got the two confused. Yeah. But, uh, no. So it goggle, it's goggle and the big hat. She had a big hat, didn't I she? Know, and a I pair know of goggles exactly and kind of sort of what a sort of jippo look about her. What do you mean goggles? You can't say jippo. What do you mean goggles? <laughs> what's the what's <laughs> the correct word to say? Gypsy. Jippo is <laughs> yeah, it's a terrible <laughs> derogatory <laughs> term. It's like well, she looked like some kind of scrounger, and she sort of had like matted dreadlocks and selling selling clothes bags. She yeah. <laughs> no, listen, right, lucky, lucky, lucky Heather, lucky Heather. Yeah, <laughs> she she had a big leather. Do you remember when you got stopped with lucky Heather and you oh, didn't buy it? And then you had some bad luck. I had some bad luck about ten minutes later. Yeah, so I always stop and buy something. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, so I've got so shed loads of it at home. Because <laughs> I, I don't know when you got to throw it away. They don't tell you how long you've got to keep it for for the six, good luck. Six of January. <laughs> yeah, keeping it after that's bad luck. Yeah. I'm getting confused again, aren't I? Um, <laughs> um, no, what it was, it, I don't know which myth to believe in. Right, stop it. Let's go back to. I've got a party start. It's going on. Yeah. yeah, that is. As so I say, Flegel, she's is the that what her name? No, that's one of the banana splits. Now you've confused me. <laughs> Flegel's the one with the big teeth and right. the and the goggles. Right. Snork is the one with the, basically. To be honest, I think it's an elephant. Okay. I think they've they've <laughs> pretended they've made up an animal. There's so they, many people listening who don't know who the banana splits are. The banana splits. The banana splits. <laughs> so, right. Listen, this they know the banana splits are, and even people under twenty know them. Well. Um. Uh, Snork, Flegel, Drooper. Who was the other one? If you can remember the name of that. <laughs> yeah, what's the number? Because <laughs> I actually want to know this. This is what radio's for. When I can't think of something, they tell me. Yeah. So it's 08700 Flegel, Drooper, and Snork. I've no idea. I've God. No idea. Flegel, Drooper, and Snork. Da da, da da, Drooper, and Snork. Flegel. Bingo! Nice, well done. Don't bother calling. <laughs> <laughs> so that particular uh, tragedy or that has yeah. been avoided. Bingo. I yeah. don't know what bingo looks like. Yeah. There was one anyway. was there, there was one that had sewn up eyes. <laughs> Drooper, I think. Sorry, go on. No, anyway. Um w my point was this. Go on. Um Pink. Oh, I can't be bothered. <laughs> no, really? I can't be bothered. I think we can play that new one by Pink. You can sort of like Pink. Why? Because it's too poppy. They just won't allow Pink on XFM. They what? They will not allow Pink on XFM. They what? They Wait a minute, that's red rag to a ball. <laughs> I'm always going to Someone's Rebels. telling you that you can do something. <laughs> That's crazy. Right, let's only get the new Justin Timberlake single. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing what? is, Ricky, you're gonna have to nip down and have a word with Foxy because we haven't got it up here. Really? Yeah. I'd I mean, love you'll to. Have it, Can't you call someone at Capital Radio? Well, you know, can we call someone? What's that one by Busted? That's what I go to school for. What about Abs? That's Dynamite. Abs? The new one from Abs? Dynamite. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, play a record and we'll discuss this pink thing. We do uh, a bit of Cat. Oh, yeah. Cat Stevens. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Cat's Bullet 4. This is Sittings. Lovely. Piano and everything, innit? Oh, this was the tune we were originally gonna use as the theme music for TV's The Office. That's starts yeah. again on Monday, I think it's what. <laughs> Just play it. <laughs> Stevens and sitting. I couldn't find Pink, Rick, but I've got the S Club Juniors. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> pink is all right. Magic just because right? it, it hasn't got the credibility of like new punk and new metal, it's a oh. good tune. Uh -huh. It's all right. Don't, don't, we've never been snobby. We've never worried about credibility, have we? Hearsay. <laughs> 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 They're all down there, I can go and get them. I'll tell you what, if you're gonna do that, I'm just gonna play adverts from now on. Can we play some adverts? <laughs> Supergrass. Grace on XFM 104.9. I've been forgetting to say that. Yes. It's all gone to pot. Mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Um, I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant. Hello there. Little Carl's not here. Claire Sturgis is here. Absolutely. Hello. Yeah. Cracking. Yeah. Now, I think we can play pink, you know. <laughs> well. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't want to be responsible for it. No. I mean, I don't. I don't have a problem particularly with the lady. You know, she's made uh, a good effort <laughs> with it, and I think. But apparently, it's it's either number one or it's going to. It's likely to be number one really? this, uh, this week. So, so um, it's not that rebellious. Me it's not particularly this, rebellious. No. But um, I don't know. I mean, what worries me is uh, that whether the audience will turn against you, and that you'll lose all musical credibility. 
<laughs> I've that's got that's any. Listen, no, I did have any. Little, very little. Really? I, um, had a, an email just now and I think maybe this answers why we didn't get very many calls about the, uh, give us a crazy band name or an, an album title. Think about the number? They, no, 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 they think maybe they're all at the, uh, the march, the big march. <laughs> <laughs> Which I makes a lot of sense because I would, I would imagine a lot of the sort of losers that listen to our show What's the march probably about? also agree that, uh, they should go and protest about a war. Oh, it's the oh, anti-war no, well, anti yeah, march. Yeah. <laughs> it's the gangster war. <laughs> 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 Well, I don't really know the ins and outs of this this whole thing, really. I mean, it sounds yeah. like it's a long way away. I, I, I suppose it's like, it. yeah, they, they were asked if they wanted a war, and they said no. Is yeah. that so bad, Steve? Yeah. Do that no, I, I mean, good luck to them. I, I don't think he's gonna have much effect, to be honest. <laughs> You don't think? No, I don't really believe but, but in I, I don't think he's worried in the light in the slightest. A couple no. of sort of dropouts and some sort of junkies are in the streets, you know. Well, you you, you say that you ladies. say that, but what what's their names? Um, specials, Free Nelson Mandela. Eight years later, he was out. <laughs> That's true enough. So <laughs> That's absolutely. I forgot I, about that. I think they were. And yeah, and and, and uh, Live Aid sorted out world hunger. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that was that. So that was. Uh, but um, I see the difference there. Ebony and Ivory, no more racism now. <laughs> but musicians- That was done. Rick, you see musicians were involved there. Yeah. I don't think any musicians are involved this time. I think, well, I think David Albarn's there, they but- prob They've probably taken their, their bongos and their didgeridoos. The tablers. You can see they're, they're walking down now, loads of ponchos. Yeah. You were gonna wear a poncho once, you thought it'd make you more of a hit with the ladies, well, weren't you? Oh, no, but they're so you. now, ponchos. They are, in top shop, they are so now. So you'd have been ahead of your time. Uh, yeah. As ever, as ever. You see, I think if you wait a couple of years, those clogs will be in. Exactly. <laughs> this is what I'm hoping. You just- What about this pipe? I love to think that they're gonna- they're, the pipe- the pipe is definitely on the way back at some point. The yeah, the pipe with What the do you children. think of a lady- uh, uh, sorry, as a lady, what do you think of a man who smokes a pipe? I think it's lovely. Do you think it's quite yeah, sexy? Very sexy, yeah. I think it's quite I wouldn't want to snort It takes you, your breath away. What? Cos I've given up smoking, Steve. Yeah, it takes- it takes- Well, I, <laughs> I won't be giving you a blowback. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that phrase is, Rick. I- I, I gambled with that phrase. <laughs> I don't know if a blowback- I don't- that could be obscene. I've got no idea what a no, blowback is. No, I think is. it is very- very sexy in a sort of a Val Dunican kind of way. He never smoked a pipe. Not Did well, he not? No, he smoked no. a goat. Oh, right. Well, he sang about smoking a goat. About Paddy McGinnis goat, it blew you know, up. If you look at pictures of the great sort of thinkers of our time, you know, maybe at, their, at college or university in the sort of 1930s, mm. you've got those great, you know, the great thing of people who became the great artists of our century, and yeah. you see pictures of them in Oxbridge when they're in 19, they're all smoking pipes in tweed suits. Yeah. No young people now are smoking pipes. I fear that it's gonna be dead in like 15 years. I don't think anyone's gonna be smoking pipes. But I think, again, you I are feel like way maybe it's ahead maybe of a your time. Profile. Yeah. Maybe I've got to yeah. try and bring it back. Bring it back. I you think know, so. And then we could be seeing kids in Top Shop on a Saturday. And let's not forget sniffing snuff. Some snuff. <laughs> I, I, my nan yeah. used to sit there with two brown stains just dribbling from her nose. Lovely. Sit, 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 yeah, oh. and that bit of snuff and some gin. Well, this is oh. it. I, because my friend always said if he won um, millions of pounds, he'd spend it all trying to bring back as a fashion accessory the cape. <laughs> the cape? Because <laughs> I think See, the cape, because like you cape, can make such it? an entrance with the cape. And a cane. You? A cape and a cane, yeah, and a top hat. I wish people had to wear hats now. I see. I, 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 I can carry off because my shape and size. I look like Bertie Bassett. <laughs> Whereas <laughs> you look, you look Basil Rathbone. I, well, or something. I look you'd, pretty good at all sort of you'd cut a good, Lee. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wow. You but I, could I sweep into a room? You I know. know. You yeah, see, I think you look like. Don't, don't get this wrong. Don't take this wrong. Like, <laughs> we're mates. I think you look like a freak with a cape on. <laughs> okay. So, all right. Well. And at which point would you take it one step further and add the deerstalker? You know, and go the whole Sherlock Holmes. Well, like, yeah, I'd have the cape, the pipe, the deerstalker, yeah. and I'd solve crimes. <laughs> it looks great. It looked like uh, as some sort You could of... be my fat companion. <laughs> <laughs> I could be. What? I'd sort of like get padding and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I like that. Yeah. 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 I yeah. like the solve. <laughs> I'd like to solve more crimes, if I'm being truthful. I'd like to- I would love I, to know, solve I, crimes. Just to solve one crime would be oh, great. I wouldn't, I wouldn't matter if I solved it. If I, please came to me and said, you know, I went, I'd just look at the first one, i go in. Yeah. Just get it off the streets, you know what I mean? Just like, tick, done that. Sure. yeah. But you I know. just feel there'd be something, I, th I feel like maybe I- Cause you know like in, in TV shows, it always used to be, you know, they were a, like, they were a doctor who also solved crimes, they were a plumber, they solved crimes. Quincy. Quincy, Quincy you know, oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, a couple of sort of BAFTA winning writers- What if Heart to Heart also solve crimes? That's good. That'd be good. <laughs> that'd be great. <laughs> Hard to hard do. They were just millionaires. They were just a couple, a millionaire couple who would invariably sort. You know, uh, what but was they, the murder they, they she did wrote? That she every week, though, was every she? week, heart to heart. Murder oh. she wrote. She, she wrote, wrote it and she solved she it. She always solved it. Yeah. It's brilliant. Yeah. Murder she did wouldn't have been such a good sort of no, thing. No, no, no. no. Um, but this is what I mean, you don't seem to get that anymore. You know, people who uh, do one job for a living. You know, DJ who also solves crimes. A was a, well, the DJ who solved crimes? That was um, shoestring. Was he a DJ? Yeah. He was. He was Eddie a private Shustring. ear, was a, was a, wasn't he? Was he was a, a private a DJ ear was also a on the radio. Eye. Is that what that was? That the thing yeah. they did? Not private eye, private ear. Is that what they yeah. said? Yeah. And how did he solve it? He worked out clues yeah. for call-ins and stuff. Yeah. No, he used to leave the building. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> he didn't just sit there and play records and then try and guess. That's but, right. <laughs> give us a call on the usual number if you've got any idea uh, who murdered. Uh, uh, now it's snitch hour. Got a letter here. Who well, reckons I she knows? Used, I know a lot of my friends are uh, big fans of Midnight Caller. Was, do you remember oh, Midnight Caller? Yeah, was yeah. he a DJ he just, uh, who solved crimes? Yeah, it was one of those late night things in America, wasn't it? But, but was he a DJ? He solved crimes, didn't he? I don't know if he'd solved crimes or just solved- If you've ever solved a crime, email solved us. Solved puzzles. <laughs> he, had, he had one of those puzzler books. Weren't you on the front cover of Puzzler once? One of those things you get- mm. Weren't in Puzzler. Were you? Was I? No, oh. I don't think so. Oh, it was your other friend, a friend of mine, DJ, yeah. Yeah, it was, a, yeah, it was, yeah. Puzzler magazine. That's it, yeah. So was, was Puzzler a rude thing? No, no, it's one of those things that those you Those puzzle books you can you, buy. You, oh, you, actually, you, it's a puzzle. You do for coach journeys. And they just put- They just put- People's pictures on without permission. Yeah. I don't think they're just like, well, I didn't give permission. They just, they just find like, um, like celebrities and they just get their picture and they stick them on the well, front. Well, they wouldn't have yeah. used me then, would they? Well, I, I forgot. I didn't, I didn't. Hey, pink. Should we play pink? Yeah. Oh man. Get I don't live by the rules. See on your head. Here we go. <laughs> that was the strokes and <laughs> kids are <laughs> kids are mental. Yeah. That was no, you're all right. No, shut up. No, the thing is, I, I think if we'd introduced that as just, and we didn't mention who it was, and we just said this is the new one from one of those trendy new bands, you know, the Boomtown Rats. <laughs> <laughs> And, um, ah, I'm sure they, these oh. listeners would have happily accepted it. Yes, yeah. it was. They knew it was pink, and the, the phone lines have gone crazy. We had upwards of two oh. calls. <laughs> <laughs> we had, I'll tell you this, we had between two and four calls. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and uh, ah, and they've not they've not enjoyed it. Why do we do this show? We don't need it. to do this show no, no, because we you we, love us. We could be on Radio One. Oh man, I like we it. could be on Radio Two, probably. Yeah. I don't know. Virgin, uh, uh, I think called once. Yeah. Um, Someone from Steve, they just said, uh, "Pink sounds like Run for the Sun" by Bucks Fizz. <laughs> I can see what they're thinking. <laughs> I can see what they're thinking. Uh, what do they want then? Well, yes. Okay, f God, what's the phone oh, number again? The, you, know, you know what people <laughs> like, they, I know, do you ever, I never understand who phones already, who tries, it took us like two hours to fail to get through to Chris Moyles. <laughs> what phone radio stations, can you please play the new one by The Strokes? You just buy it, or you have the album. Why have you got to hear it on the radio? What difference does that make? Some guy talks at the end and the, and the beginning of it. Yeah. Partially ruins the song. I, I can't understand who phones up for requests. We're really alienating our listeners yeah. now, aren't we? Nice We're going. One. We don't care what you think. Go and buy it. We're yeah. going to play what we want, and we don't care. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're not being particularly funny or interesting. Oh. We haven't even got that to fall back on. I'll tell you what it is. We're arrogance. <laughs> Laziness. When you've got a, when you've got a, a hit TV show on your hand and you've won the awards and you're doing and you're make, you're making the kind of money that you are at those <laughs> massive corporate gigs, yeah, where they're paying yeah. you thousands of pounds to turn up for ten minutes, you, you don't need this. You, I mean, Steve, and, uh, Steve, don't don't you get that then? I'm afraid I don't, Claire. No, I don't no, we we no, we, no. Uh, we, oh, we carved are. it up early on that. Um, Steve would not be making the sort of money that I would. <laughs> yes. And, uh, he shook on that. That was, that was written contractually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Place. So, uh, I think- Oh, I, so you did shake on that? Oh, yeah. yes. It oh, would be, yes. and it would be horrible to go back I don't think he realised quite the difference. Yeah. Um, but, the, the you know- huge success. I don't think yeah. he'd want me to Welsh on it. Right. I don't think he'd be happy with himself if yeah. I gave him any. I couldn't live with myself if you <laughs> yeah. gave me some of that care. <laughs> well, what should we play then? What should we play some strokes? Should we, we play just the strokes save it or by something? Playing the strokes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Then. That's that's nice oh, thank God for that. <laughs> Electric soft braid, same way every day. Is that what you want? Is that what you want? Do you mean St me or the listener? The listener. Sure. Is it what? So they didn't like. So they want good music, they see. Apparently, Rick. They, so they, they would prefer. Uh, good music to They pink. want good music, do they? Are you sure they want good music? They, they, they appear to want good music, Rick. Why, right. on, wait a minute, what are you thinking? I'm gonna think of playing a really good record next. Oh, wait a minute, whoa, 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 as long as they promise to turn the stereo up to number ten. <gasps> wee, wee, yeah, wee, 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 yeah, wee, What about yeah. the neighbours, Rick? Think about the neighbours. What? You think they'll annoy the neighbours? They may annoy Steve, the maybe I want them to annoy the neighbours. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What? what? Rick? You know what that was? What? It's the sound of the rule book being torn up. Yes! Yeah. Rick? Yeah. Yeah, you think I'm playing with fire? It sounds like it. Maybe I like getting burned. <laughs> oh, careful, Rick, careful. Because you could scold your hands, but what about your elbows? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I knew what I meant. I didn't really right. that through. This is a great piece of music by one of the greatest bands ever. Okay, it's one of their best songs. Yeah, that's okay. true. Okay, it is long. It's a long but, tune. Well, you know, what, what? 
What, you can't handle what? that? You can't, you don't want eight minutes Ooh, of you the don't want eight minutes of cracking music. Yeah, listen to this. Please switch uh, off your radio. No, seriously, turn the radio up. Turn, turn the crank it turn up. Turn the crank it up. Go. Rock it up. <laughs> That makes up for pink, doesn't oh, it? Oh, man alive. Oh, that's It's an amazing track. Out. It's incredible. And that, it is, I mean, incredible. It's textbook right. rock and roll. But that, uh, when I was growing up, I had two favourite lyrics all time, and uh, one of them's in there. Meet the new boss, same as the old boss. Yeah, it sends a shiver it's, down It's fantastic. And the other one was, um, it's on America's Tortured Brow, that Mickey Mouse has grown up a cow. Nice. Do you know that is? Nice. Who? Got a phone in. This would be a competition. What should we give away? Um, office. <laughs> we haven't got any, have we? Just why don't you just sign that's your like signature on a piece of paper or something? That's got to be worth something in a couple of years. Four quid. Yeah. <laughs> Four pounds you get on it eBay. It would cheapen the piece of paper. <laughs> yeah. Not if it's a rubbish bit of paper. I've had an which, email which here. I probably would sign. There's an e email here from uh, Davey Look, it's lit up. No, wait a minute. Look at that. Oh my God. They've gone mad. They uh, answer it. Put them live. Oh. They might know the answer. Hang on. We'll give them. We'll give them some. We'll give them some CDs. How do you? How do you? Oh, like why do you figure that out? Let me just read this email. Go on. I, yeah, if you're having to play, it says here, if you're having to play extra ad breaks and eight minute long songs, it just goes to show who provides all the material for that radio show of yours, uh, did Carl secretly write The Office as well? <laughs> and I think to myself, <laughs> it's like, what, what do you oh, want from us? <laughs> just see if it's it's on one of the most incredible rock and roll tunes ever laid down on vinyl and you're whinging. I know. Because you'd rather have our inane banter. What kind of a person are no, you? No, they'd rather have Carl's inane well, banter. Clearly. Don't, don't big your I've roll just, up. No, no, no. That's <laughs> at all, Steve. I've just had a phone call from a very nice girl saying, where's Carl? I said, well, you know, he's back next week. Well, what's wrong with me? She went, no, you're lovely, Claire. but Carl calms the other two down. Sure. Really? Sure. Can, can we can just see if someone's on the phone? Is yeah, anyone on, there? Have we got? Right, what are we going to give him? We're going to give him we some CDs. So we're we're we'll take the name. Right, right. Anyone there? Hello? Hello? Oh, God, there's someone there! Oh, I've got to put my headphones on. Oh, hang on. Oh, uh, what was the, uh, what was the lyric Stay again? Stay there, please. All right. It's on America's Tortured Brow that Mickey Mouse has grown up a cow. Life on Mars, David Life Bowie. on Mars, David Bowie. Oh. It's easy as nice. that. Hey. What's your name? It's John Ball. John Ball. John, I'll be honest with you, we got nothing. We got nothing to give uh, you. It's not good enough. No, yeah. we're getting some. We're giving it, yeah, we're giving an office CD. It doesn't work. We can't keep doing that, Rick. It's We've got nothing yes, else. They don't, give, they don't give us anything, do they? They don't, they, uh, oh. <laughs> it's a wonder we get into the building. No one's around on Saturday. There's no one cares. Office mm -hmm. DVD. Yeah, what, what okay. would you really like, though, if you could have anything? Yeah, Office DVD. See? There you go. Uh, Brilliant. Okay. Stay on the line, mate, and I'll get you details, okay? Excellent. That was a competition. We did- that was like real radio. Well done. It was like real radio. Now we've got to play David Bowie, haven't we? That's what they oh, do. Oh, no, you Foxy. are. I see what you mean. No, but Foxy would have it well, you're lined gonna have, up. you're gonna have a heart attack. Am I? Like, <laughs> live on air. It'll be, <laughs> yeah. it'll be dramatic radio, and that's Sony Award winning, I know that. <laughs> Any kind of- I think you remember when Tony Blackburn had his breakdown on there, I think- did he win awards for that? I mean, it was pretty impressive Probably. stuff. It was pretty tight. <laughs> yeah, what- well, what, breakdown yeah, award? have a breakdown, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, the, the, uh, this year's best breakdown on this year. Tony Blackburn. Yeah, but, um- Or Tessa, Tessa, marry me. Yeah, it was something like that, wasn't it? Yeah. Can you play the same song again and again and again? Must did have been fascinating radio. Uh, <laughs> that sounds like Capital Now. <laughs> Oh, that's that's satire. High five. Is that nice one? Well done there. Oh, well done. Well oh, done. Are we owned by Capital. You, you we got, are, yeah. <laughs> yeah we, remember what happened last time? Sure. And now Richard Park, who owned Capital, is is the grand master. What? The grand master. He's, he's <laughs> grandfather. No, he's a headmaster, um, headmaster of um, Fame Academy. Oh, is he? Yeah. Okay, let's play a record now because you, you you have to lie down because you're, <laughs> you're just getting so worked up. And now I can tell when there's an excitement and enthusiasm and sweat, beads of sweat run down. Well, your it started off so badly. We had nothing, but then I did a competition, gave away some things. You've got an email that really annoyed you, haven't you? Well, we can talk about that later. Yeah. Um, but yeah, whenever I see beads of sweat, I know because that's Jeez. not the Ricky Gervais I know. <laughs> okay. It worries me. You never work yourself up into any kind of sweat. Okay. So let's, just play it. Let's, um, we're going so well now, aren't we? What about a bit of Beck? Let's that go, like? a lovely bit of Beck, just yeah. to check everything out. Just yeah. calm everything yeah. down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, yeah. yeah. All right, relax. Yeah. Okay, yeah. You're there you are, yeah. you see, he's gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Beck. Beautiful, that. Good tune. Brilliant. Good tune. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Lost Cause, XFM 104.9. It's going well, isn't it? Oh, I'm loving it. Go on, let's do some else then. Adverts. Yeah. Adverts, I'd love to hear some adverts. Clear. Yeah. Oh, please. <laughs> There it is. Life on Mars, with that great lyric by David Bowie. Indeed. Yeah. Although, it's not quite as good as, uh, what was the one, was it Jeff Lynne? 
the chances of anything coming from Mars are a million to one. And yet they come. Yeah, and still they <laughs> and come. And still they come. And oh, still no, they you come. Get, would you get that? A lab rock. I'd like to. A million yeah. to one. But it's, it's yeah. a million to one and still they come. Clint. Yeah, and yeah. They, come. they like, didn't yeah, know the odds. <laughs> I go, what are you doing? It's a million <laughs> to one. <laughs> it's what? Some guy There's a million to one on you. We should have put a bet on you. You didn't tell me you were coming. We could have split it 50 50. I could have made it a little bit. I'm going to go, wow. I could have probably got them up to a million and a half. Gorg, what can Now you're here. We're never going to get good odds. Oh, Gorg, the chances of that. The chances of that. How many more million to What have you come for? They've probably come for that. Well, why didn't you sneak in? They've come for that quash drink, haven't they, again? You could have snuck down. You could have let us know and flown back and then made another one. You know that fella? We come for that drink you call quash. I bet he'd get off with snork. Are you thinking of weird stuff again? You're thinking of crazy ideas again. What about those, uh, uh, those smash aliens? What about, you got something on them, have you? With yeah. The you know, uh, the they guy, went out, right, without an umbrella. <laughs> oh, poured down. It they rained. Got... I knew it would. <laughs> yeah. I knew it would. <laughs> anyway. Oh, anyway, well, David Bowie. Now, look, this is spiralling. Can I just mention Lynn, who's just phoned, because she was queuing up all night outside the Apollo for Bowie tickets, and she got a pair, so oh, she's well, dead well, happy. Well, then, so can you dedicate that to everyone who's queuing up? So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Best of luck to them. Jeez. And I wanted to tell you about the time Bowie came into XFM to talk to Zoe Ball. And David came in, did he? Was just recently? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to mention her name. She works in the office, Charlotte. Uh, when he walked by her desk, which you have to do when you come to the studio, she didn't actually meet him, shake his hands, or, or make eye contact, but she actually cried because he was in her vicinity. Really? And she, wow. she actually burst into tears when he walked by. Isn't Rick, that? I I've made that. women do that. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know. You've got something in common. Well, a little something in common with David Bowie. But they, yeah, but they, they, <laughs> I, I, they whimper and weep when you're in. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's sort of like. There's a lot more screeching, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of screaming. Tell them about that emo you just what got. Was but, right, I got to tell the. the uh, I, was, I nearly said the fans! <laughs> <laughs> People who happen to be listening to XFM waiting for the yeah. person after us. Who's on next? Natasha's on Natasha. the football yeah. show. Right, right. Um, uh, Steve was genuinely annoyed. I laughed, right? <laughs> Steve was genuinely annoyed. He doesn't like, he doesn't like rudeness or people insulting him from I a distance. I'm not sure I can find it. Oh, what was it? Oh, you got to find it. Well, hang on, let me, uh... Oh, hang on. This is good radio as well, the sound of a, a <laughs> mouse clicking in the distance. Well, I'll just sure keep talking. I'll me. just keep talking. Can't what was, come up with what some was, magic. What was Scooby-Doo all on about? A talking dog is a bit weird, <laughs> isn't it? Oh, I wanna... Um, and then, right, what was that? Wacky Races? Uh, I don't know if... <laughs> oh, no, wait a minute, no, wait a minute. So why did they run, the cavemen, if they... Uh, the car? I've got it, I've, I've got, got it. Them. Right, okay, um... <laughs> this is an email. This is an email that was sent through. Right. Uh, and I... I th this is my feeling. I think if you're gonna email an insult... <laughs> You've got to at least be clear what the insult is. <laughs> you can't, you can't make me do the work. You can't make me try and guess or figure no. out. No, it's like sending someone hate mail and they have to pay postage. Yeah, exactly. You exactly. go, well, if you're gonna, s what yeah. you me? exactly. Or making yeah, an obscene phone call, but correct. yeah, uh, correct the, yeah, call. yeah. The, uh, the postman just do twenty five p before he hands exactly. you a letter yeah, bomb. Yeah. Go on. It says, uh, Merchant. <laughs> merchant. <laughs> it opens with Merchant. <laughs> Who are you, call sad, exclamation mark. <gasps> At least my mother still don't cut my hair. <laughs> Merchant. Who are you, call sad. At least my mother still don't cut my hair. Is it an anagram? I don't know. <laughs> I feel like it's been translated from the <laughs> French. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a Japanese spelling yeah, exactly, hates you. Exactly, and he's he's There's got a shit, yeah. he's got a Japanese English dictionary. It's just it's just literal. Yeah. <laughs> so um, how does he know your mum cuts your hair then? Have you said you've never said that on there, have you? <laughs> it's not true, Gervais. <laughs> can I just that. say, uh, I think your hair looks really nice. Thank thank I've known you for about <laughs> five does. years now. Oh, no, it's it, lovely. Uh, I laugh. I laughed at you needing someone to say it. It looks fine. Yeah, it looks good. What do you mean it looks fine? <laughs> it does look good. It looks good. He's got a little bit of product on it, hasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Maybe I have. Maybe I have. <laughs> a little bit of hair gel. What maybe you uh, maybe Gavin had his fingers all over it <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Yeah, I have my hair cut by Gavin of uh, West Hampstead. Is it he called? Is that is what it's called, Gavin? Or is he a bloke who works in? It's Gavin who works in. Do a you barbershop. use that fudge right. stuff? On Sorry, is that, no, no. Seriously. I use a form of clay, a moulding <laughs> clay. Yeah, that's yeah. Mad. Gavin, Gavin recommended mad. it. Yeah. Gavin recommended it, and I've been very happy so far. <laughs> Hold on, though. Rick, what do you use? Uh, I don't. Yeah. yeah. Don't I just start? Well, well, that's obvious. <laughs> no, I just sort of like comb it back and whatever or it falls really. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, you had more questions about Gavin. 
Yeah, no. I was up seeing Gavin yesterday, um, just having a haircut. There's no, nothing untoward. <laughs> and, um, and I was, and I went, I thought I popped past Habitat. There's a Habitat, and it's quite a trendy kind of, um, uh, designer furniture shop or whatever. Sure. And I thought I popped in there. I thought I'll pick up the, uh, the sort of brochure, the, the catalogue. So there was a big stack of the new catalogue. You catalog. were stunned by the prices you're gonna tell me, aren't you? No, I'll tell you what, I was about walking out with the, the guy went, oh, hey, where are you, hey? Where are you going with the hair? It's a great looking haircut, but where are you going with that catalogue? I went, what do you mean? He went, it's two quid. You've got to pay two pounds for a catalogue from Habitat, and I was and I said, well, I could go down to Argos. I can get as many as I want for free. I can go crazy in Argos. I can get them Littlewoods, the, the mail order people. Yeah. They'll send it to my home. Yeah, I got to pay two. There's lingerie in that one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you've just got like some furniture and stuff. <laughs> And I'm paying two quid for me. If there were some ladies draped over the kind of filing cabinets, <laughs> I'd be interested. I'd I pay two quid. I love the fact that you, you- what did you say though? You didn't say I can go down to Argus and get as many as I like. What I did, did you say? Yeah, I did. I did. I said, I said, well, what are you talking about? This is- I- what- what- I'm- why am I paying two quid? That isn't charging for a catalogue. But this is a catalogue just to- just to tell me what I might want to buy. It's sort of their calling card. It's like paying for a poster or a sticker. Exactly. This something. is what- it's just like- it's almost like paying an entrance fee to go into the shop. Yeah. That's it, a good idea. It's a good idea. It's a good- I mean, because it's good to just walk around and browse. So, <laughs> I mean, I'd pay a quid to like, walk around a really yeah. good shop. Yeah, but I'll tell you this, the, uh, yeah, if Habitat maybe had some kind of, like, sort of centrefold. Why don't you do I'd this? I'd be interested. I'll tell you what, in a great shop like Habitat, you pay a pound, right? If you buy anything, that comes off the thing. If you don't buy anything, you've- you've paid a you pound to stop quid. wasting their time. It's an incentive to buy. I wouldn't like it. Sure. I wouldn't go in there. I think it's a terrible idea. <laughs> well, what anyway, we, uh, that's that's. that's what should we play? That was a sideways look at the world, the world <laughs> of high street shock. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, you should play the award-winning Ms. Dynamite. Yeah, oh, yeah go on, cracking. Yeah. Ms. Dynamite. Good that, isn't it? It's cracking. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah, Mercury award-winning. Absolutely. Well done. Yeah, good luck to her. Good luck to her. I must admit, I went in the streets. But I don't yeah. she's a very good second choice, and uh, you know, wish all the luck in the world. All the luck in the so, world. I'm looking at your hair. It's not right? bad, is it? And you've you've you have bigged it up, so you're quite. So I, I assume you didn't go to a barber. Barber, you've got this. This, this is a hairdresser. This is right. Gavin of West. Okay, Hedford. I'm going to ask you now, yeah. right? And I'm not going to take the mickey, even if it's a hundred pounds. I think you're a fool, and I know you wouldn't pay that much. But it's obviously more than the fiver, then, isn't yes. it? How much do you pay? Ricky Gervais, for this haircut, I paid the princely sum, and I was proud of it, twenty-two notes. Ooh. But- That's all right. But I went up to twenty-four, because I was pleased with what I had. <laughs> Little tip for him. <laughs> Two quid tip. Two quid tip. I could have just given him one of those Habitat catalogues. <laughs> <laughs> he'd have been pleased with that. I love Just slap that on the desk. Yeah, and he'd have gone, thanks very much. Okay. So you'd have had to go, I'm gonna be honest, Gavin. <laughs> that is not free. <laughs> exactly. If that had been an Argus catalogue, then throw me out of it, it'd be an insult. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Look at the price. I'm good two quid, yeah. yeah. That two quid is yours. That's <laughs> yours, you're would taking you, that home. Would you prefer the money? <laughs> what should we do? Yeah. I got, oh, um, I got, we usually play a, a new one around this time. Um, what new adverts have we got? <laughs> <laughs> Plenty here. Oh, Excellent. come on, let's come on. Are you in here? <laughs> no. <laughs> XFM. Badly drawn boy. I imagine that's starting a British film. Do you yes. know what I mean? They're jumping on a London bus and they're going around London. Well, of course, uh, the film about a boy, he did the soundtrack for. So if you were a little bit more up on films and stuff, you'd have already yeah. known that that <laughs> idea's been done and you wouldn't have embarrassed yourself and there wouldn't be egg on all our faces. Oh, but no. thanks very much. Sorry about that, I'm eating. <laughs> 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 I'm very messy, aren't yeah, I? Yeah. What have you got, Steve? What have you got for Rick, me? I'm glad you've asked. Thanks for asking. Um, this is a Stevie Wonder track. Now, mm. I hope people aren't as offended by Stevie as they were by Pink. I'm sure they won't I be. I mean, for goodness sake, he's one of uh, 20th century's greatest artists. Yeah. Um, um, this is from an album, not one of his more famous, Fulfilling This Is First Finale. Yeah. And this is a track, um, called You Haven't Done Nothing. But Rick, here's a little quiz for you, a little pop quiz for you. Oh. There is a very famous, um, backing vocal group here. I mean, they were famous in their own right, but here they're doing backing vocals. I'd like you to identify them. And there's a- there's an Office DVD winging its way to you, Ricky, <laughs> if you could spot who it is. Right, Let's okay, the pressure's on. <laughs> Oh, magnificent. Do you not Brilliant. enjoy that? Excellent. Yeah. Fantastic. Stevie Wonder, you haven't done nothing from, uh, fulfilling this as first finale. It's quite tricky, that, the backing vocals. Well, They're I not particularly that. prominent, well, are they? Well, and it can be anyway. That's why I'll just go for someone that's a vocal group with I don't know. Uh, is it obvious or is it's it- It's very obvious. What, that it would be that they would back him? Uh, it's not obvious that they would back him, but it's uh, obvious that, uh, who, I mean, they are huge stars. Or well, they were huge stars. And what is- was it- was it- so what, mid-70s? Early-70s? Talking mid-70s. 1974 is the album. 
as an office it's DVD not, wiener. It's not the Jackson 5. It's the like Jackson 5. Is it really? Oh! There they are. Well done. Well, there, there you go. You are, yeah. well I mean, that's done. how big Stevie was that you could ask the Jackson 5 just to stroll in. There you go. With some fairly nondescript backing vocals. First, stuff. first, uh, album I ever got, Jackson 5. Was it? Which yeah. one? It was the one with Rockin' Robin on it. Nice. <laughs> did you rock to that? I imagine you I, did. I walked around, around to that. How old were you? What, what, um, what, what, uh, 18? <laughs> I was about, uh, t I suppose, I don't know, 11 or 12, and I had one of those little, um, cassette players when you had to press down, play and what's it, and I had a little handle that came out. They're brilliant, yeah. And I had one CD with it. Well, one tape. One tape, yeah. Sure. And, uh, and you bought it yourself, did you? Or no, did no, you? that was a Christmas present. Lovely. Yeah. Lovely. And that was the, what, the only one you had for, like, uh, I imagine, like a year or something. Just well, that one tape. Yeah. Like, what yeah. was your first, uh, record purchase? It was, uh, a Disco Fever compilation. Well, actually called Disco Fever, and I got it because I, I loved Yes Wait, Sir, I Can What, are you embarrassed about having your mobile on, or what? Oh, Something's oh, vibrating, and I'm sorry. assuming it's a mobile. Oh, um, <laughs> so it's my boyfriend. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I did turn the ringer off. <laughs> oh, okay. sorry. Uh, <laughs> so what, it's a disco fever compilation? <laughs> yeah, yeah, featuring Baccarat, Yes Sir, I Can Boogie. Cracking. Yeah. And, um, Space Float On, I think, which is what I want, what I want. Float On, that Yeah, one. that's one, yeah. That's the floaters, isn't it? The floaters. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Always Hi. made me laugh. Larry. Yeah. My name's, yeah. I don't know. Magic if... Fly by Space. All oh, right. Do you remember well, that? No, one? I don't. No, yeah. no. Okay. I don't know if my first purchase is cool or not, really, because I suppose it, it seems like it was. It was the uh, greatest hits of the Stranglers. That is so oh, cool. Are the Stranglers quite cool? That's yeah. scary because uh, I yeah I finished school by the mm. time that that came out. I think mm. that's scary. The greatest of the Stranglers. No, I, I never was well, never I think a Stranglers fan. That's more to do with fan. the fact that my parents didn't have any records in the house. They had, I think, they had the Jeff Love Orchestra plays big war theme tunes. <laughs> <laughs> they had, they they had one of those Top of the Pops albums with a woman wearing a neckerchief on the cover. Yeah, and um, and that was pretty much it. That, they, and the eighteen twelve overture, you know, played on the one fiddle of those. or something. I had one of those with Mozart Mozart's fortieth on it because right. that was that was released at the time. The Oh, that wasn't obviously Mozart's 40th birthday. <laughs> no, no. That would have been a wild swing. If he'd made it that far, that would have yeah, been a wild That would have been great. I'd love to hear that on, uh, on record. How old was he when he died? He was quite young, wasn't he? He didn't live long. 18 years old? He was a genius. No. He was a boy wonder. Yeah, he's one hundred. He's like Alan Jones. It was all over by the time he was eleven. What a lot of people don't realise about Mozart was that he also, in his spare time, used to solve crimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was why he was so. That was what, musical crimes. He was like, instead of plagiarism oh, issues, circle, things like that. We, we have indeed. We've yeah, brought yeah. that right back. We Actually, yeah, I right. hate to interrupt you, boys, on, but we, we have got end. to uh, squeeze one more song we've in. Okay. Well, yeah, well, uh, what should we do? But, uh, what should we have? What have we got there, Claire? Well, I've got this. I've got this. This one I want to play you. I want to play the Electric Six. It better be good. Because if you end a show with it, I mean, we've had lots of faux pas. This and really is bad going to bits. be possibly the biggest song of 2003. You think so? Rick, go on in. Man yeah. alive. Yeah. Right, well, listen, yeah, thanks very much indeed, Claire. For Cheers. Thank, thank you. you. No, it's, it's a been pleasure. pleasure. Uh, yeah. Is really Carl back next week? Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, just he doesn't care, does he? Uh, yeah. Can we just quickly say, so you're on Parkinson tonight, then, Ricky? Yeah? Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. And the office starts. What is it? Monday. This is easier, isn't it? And it's a DVD winging its way. I guess I do want one. <laughs> See you next week.